that's such a testament to the kids that you don't know which kids go to GBS, which kids go to GBN. And I think that that just speaks volumes for who they are. So I think that that's like the final, you know, exclamation point on why this team is so successful. Congratulations to the 2022 GBS Field Hockey Team for taking second and state, and we look forward to seeing them compete next year for a state championship. We need to take a time out from Memorial Stadium. We will be back with more right here on the IHSA Television Network. I couldn't ask for a better agent, for a better company, in a disaster where you have no idea where to start. I learned that there's not a given in life. It takes a team, there's people that are gonna watch out for us and they care. It's been pretty stressful. Once we saw Lori and got our plan, it's uh... like a huge weight lifted. classroom again but this time I can apply these skills to make some money lots of money Family dinner with kids, not easy. You know what is easy? OSF On-Call Urgent Care. Get treatment for minor illnesses and injuries in person or connect 24-7 online. OSF On-Call Urgent Care. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. You just saw the 1A state championship. The Lena Winslow Panthers knock off Central by an impressive score, 30-8 to eight, to complete the three-peat. Welcome back inside Memorial Stadium. Mark Kruger, I'm joined by one of the three-headed monsters, Jake Zeal. And uh, Jake, first off, congratulations on the great victory. Uh, what were some of the challenges that Central presented to you as you prepared for them coming into this morning? Uh, obviously, an all-state back that we had to shut down. Uh, their line, they played well. They actually surprised us. Uh, I think we needed a, a blow before we really had to turn it on and try to win the game. Gage, Gunner, and yourself, the three-headed monster, the three guys that certainly have gotten it done running the football this season. Talk a little bit, a bit about your relationship with those two guys. Oh, uh, basically brothers. Uh, Spend a lot of time together, uh, always in school, always by each other. So it's definitely outside of football. We're really close friends, and that uh, shows up on the field. Talk a little bit about senior leadership on this ball club. You one of those people. How important was that to you to get that done and, and being in a leader? And, and what advice would you give to some of the juniors who will be back next year? Well, last year as a junior, when we won state, there was great leadership, and that, that led us – uh, get back here. We just 
picked up the picked up the totem and kept running. So um, I think we set a good a good model for the juniors coming up, and I think I think they're they'll be able to get some stuff done. How about Coach Aaron? This final game being played under him, what has he meant to you personally and to this uh, to this program? I'm really gonna miss him. Uh, I'm gonna miss everybody, but it's really fun. Uh, obviously could be the best coach in the 1A state, Illinois. Um, yeah, it's been fun. Listen, Jake, congratulations on the championship and uh, good luck in the future to you. Thank you. All right, we need to take a time out and we will be back with more from Memorial Stadium on the IHSA Television Network. And welcome back to Memorial Stadium. You just saw Lena Winslow knock off Camp Point Central in the Class 1A state championship by a score of 30 to 8. As we welcome you back, Mark Kruger along with Rick Aaron, the head coach of Lena Winslow. And coach, first off, congratulations. And you've had so much success. I know every year and every team is special and different, but uh, let's talk obviously about this year's team and the special men that are standing behind you. Oh yeah, I mean it's it, first of all the win today was great. Uh, we we beat a very good uh, uh, Camp Point Central team. They gave us all we could, all we wanted. Uh, these these five behind us are a huge reason for it. They have been all year long, uh, some of them for multiple years. So. Um, you know, I couldn't be more proud of these guys. They've they've committed to to what we do at Lena Winslow, and uh, you know they are uh, they're on a pedestal now. I asked Jake uh, about the senior leadership. L let me ask you that same question, and and just how special have they been? They've been great. You know, I told them they uh, we had a great group of seniors last year when we won a state championship, and they kind of handed the torch over to these guys, and these guys just picked it up, picked it up and ran with it. You know, and and. Uh, you know, at this point, they, they've set the bar even higher for the next group, but they've, they've done a great job leading them as well. So and, that, and that's part of their job. After winning it all last year, you, you knew what you had coming back, and, and you knew everybody was going to be gunning for you. Did you coach any differently knowing that with this team? No, not really. I mean, we, we lost a lot of starters last year. We had a handful back on either side of the ball, but uh, uh, these guys filled in some nice pieces. Uh, some of them were starters last year, some weren't. Um, and they, they just picked up where, where we left off last year, and really we never looked back. I mean, we had our struggles throughout the year, and, and we weren't the team at the beginning of the year like, that we are now, but that's everybody in the state. So, And that's kind of the goal of the year, you know, get better each and every day and every week. And I know it's an old cliche, but they did it. There's going to be some celebration in Leland Winslow tonight. Isn't yeah, there will be. Yeah, there will be. And, and uh, these guys deserve it. They, they, uh, they're first class, first class operations. So, Coach, congratulations on a great victory to Thank you. you. All Thank right, you. you're one a state champion, Panthers of Alina Winslow, and we need to take a timeout. We will be back with a whole lot more from Memorial Stadium. This is the IHSA Television Network.
I couldn't ask for a better agent, for a better company, in a disaster where you have no idea where to start. I learned that there's not a given in life. It takes a team. There's people that are going to watch out for us and make care. It's been pretty stressful. Once we saw Lori and got our plan, it's... Uh, like a huge weight lifted. Would you look at that? I'm in the classroom again. But this time, I can apply these skills to make some money. Lots of money. Family dinner with kids, not easy. You know what is easy? OSF On-Call Urgent Care. Get treatment for minor illnesses and injuries in person or connect 24-7 online. OSF On-Call Urgent Care. And welcome back to Memorial Stadium, University of Illinois. You just saw the 1A state championship game. The Panthers of Lena Winslow in impressive fashion knock off Camp Point Central by a score of 30 to 8. As we take a look at what's coming up in just a little bit, we will have the Class 2A state championship. The number one seed, St. Teresa, trying to run the table and go undefeated against Tri-Valley. You see the 3A I see Catholic Prep, the Knights out of uh, Elmhurst, and then Williamsville, the Bullets. Both of those two teams are 12-1. and one. And then the final game today, it'll be tonight, actually, Providence Catholic, the number 13 seed, going up against the undefeated Cyclones of Sacred Heart Griffin. As we welcome you back inside Memorial Stadium, Mark Kruger, along with Don Johnson, the sideline reporter for the Class 1A and the 2A state championship games. And just, Don, your final thoughts on this 1A game. And, boy, Lena Winslow, we knew that they were going to run the ball. That's exactly what they did, and they were very successful in well, doing it. Lena Winslow was that train coming down the track. <laughs> you couldn't stop them. <laughs> uh, they, their destiny was in their heads, and they completed. They came out and did what they said they were going to do run the football, and they ran it well. And they indeed did, and they run the table, go undefeated, 14-0 and to win the 1A state title. Now, the Bulldogs of St. Teresa, they can do the same thing in Class 2A as far as running the table and going undefeated, but standing in their way down are the Vikings of Tri-Valley. Uh, how do you see this matchup unfolding here? Well, we're going to see two All-Staters that we're going to keep our eyes on. Uh, one is quarterback Matt Brummer, I mean linebacker Matt Brummer and wide receiver. He received All-State honors. And then on the other side of the ledger, Blake Regano, who is from Tri-Valley, and this guy can run the football, and he's a tough inside player. So on the, on the 1A and 2A level, you see a lot of players that go both ways, and so conditioning becomes important, and also their presence, healthy presence, becomes important. So what are you looking for early on in this ball game? Who is uh, kind of in? Con who is going to take control? Maybe m might be the key, right? Well, I think playing clean football. When I say that, no turnovers, no interceptions. There are nerves when you reach the championship level. They're sometimes tough to control. We saw that in the first half. So in Class 7A, the Peak and Dragons had a season to remember. 
making it to the state quarterfinals. Jim Matson from 25 News in Peoria reports that the Dragons' record-breaking season had an unlikely hero. A seeking high football team, and they needed a kicker. After so the Dragons the turned to the girls' soccer team and then sophomore Miley Hansen. Hansen okay. made school history, becoming the first girl to play varsity football at Pekin, and she was also quite the kicker for the Dragons. Miley had so much fun as a sophomore, there was no doubt she was coming back for this her junior season. I had such a fun year my first year, and we did so good as a team, and I felt so welcome that I was like, I'm for sure doing this again. Now, it was last year in Miley's rookie football year that I asked the soccer standout on kickoffs, what if she had to make a tackle? And you told me you would be able to tackle a guy on a kickoff if it came to it. Yes. And you, no fear. <laughs> no fear. <laughs> little fear? Maybe a little. <laughs> a week four this year versus Washington, Miley showed no fear. On this kickoff, it appeared the Washington Panthers had a touchdown. The Panther runner had just one man to beat, but it wasn't a man. It was Miley who made the touchdown saving tackle. And I was like, oh no, like this is happening. Like this guy's going this way, nobody's there. And I started like shuffling over and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm actually gonna have to do this. And then I, my adrenaline kicked in. And he did get the best of me there and I was like, Oh my gosh, if I'm going down, he's coming down with me. So I brought him down with me. It was right about this spot at Memorial Stadium where Miley Hansen graduated from Miley the kicker to Miley the football player. Her full contact touchdown saving tackle certainly fired up her Dragon teammates. Everybody about the team talks about laying your body out for the team every Friday night. And it was amazing that she actually laid her body out for the team and made the tackle when we needed it. Because they always joke about, like, Miley, you're going to have to tackle one of these days. Like, you better tackle. And I'm like, I don't know, no. <laughs> now you're ready to play linebacker? Oh, uh, no. I'll stick to kicking. <laughs> Hanson's kicking and tackling made her a fan favorite in Pekin. But it was week 11, round two of the playoffs, that Miley became a legend. With Pekin's game against Normal Community tied 31-31 and 30 seconds to go, Miley Hansen boomed through the game-winning extra point, giving Pekin a school record 11th win. I was so nervous, but I was so ready to win it for our team. I just, I didn't want our seniors to go home with an e loss, and I, I wanted it for us all, and I didn't want the season to end there. It was just so exciting. Miley Hansen, a big part of Pekin's school record 11 wins this year. You bet she can't wait to come back and play her senior year of football next fall at Pekin High. Well, next senior as a as a next season as a senior, Miley Hansen will look to help our team run a little further into the playoffs and hopefully into the state championship. We'll be back with uh, more IHSA Television Network coverage right after this. You witness threats every day. You're not going to walk away next time. And you might feel like there's nothing you can do. There's going to be a big fight at the school. No, really? But now, there's a place. Look at what they posted about her. Safe to help Illinois. Hey, I'm worried about Bobby. He might hurt himself. It's available 24-7, and your info is confidential. Seek help before harm with Safe to Help Illinois. Want a great career? Join the Carpenters Union and be part of the next generation building our communities. With the Carpenters Union Career Connections Program, high school students get a head start on the industry's leading curriculum. Learn the latest in construction technology and the many skilled crafts the Carpenters Union represents. Plus, earn as you learn. Receive a nice paycheck, health insurance benefits, and best of all, no college debt. Ask your school district to participate in the Career Connections Program and get started on your future.
Black Friday is here at Menards, and we've got the perfect present for your loved ones. With something for dad, mom, and the kids, everyone in the family will get what they want, even your furry friends. Enjoy the season and the savings. Deck out the tree and stuff your stockings with these great gifts at amazing prices. Hurry in and save big money. These deals won't last long. Doors open at 6 a.m. on Black Friday. Save big money at Menards. There are more than 20,000 ways to experience Illinois State. Hey, what's up? You ready to go to class? What kind of redbird will you be? Hi. <laughs> Create your legacy at Illinois State University. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. There you see the final score of the Class 1A game, the Panthers and the Panthers. Lena Winslow winning, getting the three-peat, knocking off Camp Point Central by a score of 30 to eight. Let's take a look at the uh, the highlights from the 1A state championship game. And boy, Gage Dunker, Don, had a great game here, a two-yard run. Yeah, he was physical all day. He was around the football, making interceptions, running the ball on the offensive side, doing what he had to do, making plays to inspire his team today. See the pooch kick right there. Here you see the run by the quarterback there to get in. Drew Struckwald, he had the touchdown. That made it 28 to nothing. The two-point conversion was good to make it 30 to 8 in favor of Lena Winslow. But it was good to see that uh, Central got the touchdown late in the ballgame. Isaac, Isaac Gennenbacher with the touchdown for Central to finish off the game. They got the two-point conversion to make it 30 to eight, your final score. Congratulations to Lena Winslow, your 1A state champs. We need to take a timeout. Come back with more from Memorial Stadium right here on the IHSA Television Network. I couldn't ask for a better agent, for a better company in a disaster where you have no idea where to start. I learned that there's not a given in life. It takes a team. There's people that are going to watch out for us and that care. It's been pretty stressful. Once we saw Lori and got our plan, it's uh... like a huge weight lifted. classroom again but this time I can apply these skills to make some money lots of money Family dinner with kids, not easy. You know what is easy? OSF On-Call Urgent Care. Get treatment for minor illnesses and injuries in person or connect 24-7 online. OSF On-Call Urgent Care.
Welcome back to beautiful Memorial Stadium on the campus of the University of Illinois. Just saw the Class 1A state championship finish up and the Lena Winslow Panthers knocking off Central Camp, uh, Camp Point Central by a score of 30 to 8 to go undefeated and get that 1A state championship. Now, in Class 2A, can the Bulldogs of St. Teresa do the same thing, run the table and win a 2A state championship? Standing in their way are the Vikings of Tri-Valley, for more on that 2A state championship game, let's send it back upstairs to the two guys who are going to call that game, Matt Rodewald and a guy who can shoot 72 on every golf course in the state of Illinois, Jack McInerney, guys. Well, Mark, if there's one thing we know is he'll find every golf course to do that with, right? <laughs> I try. Good day out here. For, you know, 45 degrees out here in Champaign. Let's let's not make light of that. The, the weather has been a subject, a sore subject for a lot of coaches around the state through the month of November. It's nice they got a nice day here in the playoffs. Well, it really is. You know, one of the factors is it comes down to the passing game. Now, in 1A, mm -hmm. we saw it didn't make any difference because both teams run the ball. They didn't throw the ball, and, the, and special teams was no big factor. Now you start getting yeah. the teams that start spreading the ball out, start throwing it a little more. Win will be a factor, and, and the, as you mentioned, weather is always a factor. Yeah, let's talk about Joe Brummer here because he's got 1,600 yards uh, passing. He can be an efficient guy as well. The Chester numbers, so you can go look at the Chester playoff game, 12 of 14, uh, his effort on that one with two touchdowns, about 144 yards. They're not going to marvel you with yards, but they're going to marvel you with the fact that they can do a lot of different things. Well, that's the thing that's really tough defensively. When you have a quarterback that has the arm, but also has the feet that keep plays alive, that makes it so difficult for the secondary to on coverage, because oftentimes if they look in the backfield, just take a peek in the backfield to see what he's doing, they lose coverage, and it results in a big play. He's going to be chased around by a guy named T.J. Klein, who had three sacks last week against Moreau Forsyth in their semifinal win. What makes T.J. so good at what he does? Well, he's just a special player. You look at him, he's a big kid. He's 255 pounds, but he moves like he's 155 pounds. He's got great versatility. He's an outstanding uh, condition because he goes both ways, and that's what makes him such an outstanding football player. And the other part of it is his dad went to the University of Iowa, He's a Hawkeye, and I always like Hawkeyes. There's a lot of Hawkeye connections there is. this Friday right. morning. We've seen that with, of course, Dick Gage Dunker and Jennings, of course. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, the the outstanding efforts of, of the Dunker family. Uh, Iowa playing at 3 o'clock, I'm sure you're well aware. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, the other factor is, too, we got some running backs that are really, really good. We're going to take a look at those, including an All-Stater and Blake Reginald, Royce Harper, who's been dealing with an injury in his shoulder. How healthy will he be? So there's a lot to look at. St. Teresa won the toss, and they deferred, so we're going to see Tri-Valley's offense first right out of the gate. Should well, be fun. things are going to be a lot different than obviously the first game. Both teams run the spread formation. And what's ironic is St. Teresa, as good as they are on offense, leads the 2A in defense. They're the top defensive team in 2A football in the state of Illinois. And that's quite an interesting topic. Should be a good one coming up. Mark, we'll send it back to you downstairs. Matt, thank you very much. Looking forward to you and Jack's call here on the Class 2A state title game coming up in just a little bit. The Bulldogs of St. Teresa and the Vikings of Tri-Valley. We need to step aside and come for a break. We'll be back to Memorial Stadium. This is the IHSA Television Network. Black Friday is here at Menards, and we've got the perfect present for your loved ones. With something for dad, mom, and the kids. Everyone in the family will get what they want, even your furry friends. Enjoy the season and the savings. Deck out the tree and stuff your stockings with these great gifts at amazing prices. Hurry in and save big money. These deals won't last long. Doors open at 6 a.m. on Black Friday. Save big money at Menards. There are more than 20,000 ways to experience Illinois State. Hey, what's up? You ready to go to class? What kind of Redbird will you be? Hi. <laughs> Create your legacy at Illinois State University. This is the great state where you'll find hearts bigger, beating truer, and always wide open. Country miles with never-ending pride, virtues and values, and colors that run deep. 
At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, we were born and raised in the land of Lincoln. And like you, we'll always be here, standing for all. Blue Cross and Blue Shield, nationwide strong, Illinois born. From the days of the one-room schoolhouse, public schools have always been the heart of our community. It's where our students learn and are inspired to dream big, where we cheer on our teams under Friday night lights, and where parents, teachers, students, and loved ones come together as one. Now, more than ever, our public schools unite us. We get set for our Class 2A state championship matchup, a Central Illinois Classic with Tri-Valley and St. Teresa separated by about 45 minutes, doing battle to see who will win a state championship here on this Friday afternoon here at Memorial Stadium. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Matt Rodewald alongside longtime Illinois high school football coach Jack McInerney. And this one, of course, these two teams have played each other in the last few years. They know each other. But it's all about when you get on this stadium field, anything can happen. Well, it really has. And the thing is, what you're looking at, though, is you got a veteran coach with St. Teresa and Coach Ramsey. He's been here so many times, and he knows exactly some of the things that go on. He knows how to get his team prepared for this kind of a thing. It's going to be a unique game as opposed to what we saw the 1A with two teams that just ran the ball. These two teams like to throw the ball. St. Teresa, of course, rolling through opponents to get to the state championship game, getting a win over Johnston City in the uh, semifinal round. Not as much stress in the semifinal round as they had a year ago and wins with a lot of points. But in that run, they lost their running back for a bit. They got him back. We'll see how healthy Royce Harper actually is. Well, he's a special player. There's no doubt about that. And he adds an another dimension to this game because, you know, you can throw the ball and have a quarterback that keeps the plays alive. But if you have a running back, that's legitimate to force that running game and make sure those linebackers stay home. The Bulldogs are balanced offensively just as the Vikings are of Tri-Valley as they take the field, their run to the state championship game. Uh, the Vikings are blue and gold. And shiny helmets today on this uh, sun-splashed Chamber of Conference day afternoon, uh, getting wins over Clifton Central. But that win over Wilmington is something that folks in, in the Tri-Valley area and Downs are going to remember for a long time. Well, anytime you knock off the defending state champion, you know, that's something to talk about. But when you knock them off so early in the playoffs and then you start rolling afterwards, and you see the big win right after that. Sometimes teams get complacent after an upset win, but they certainly did not did not in that ball game. The starting lineups and the opening kickoff for our Class 2A state championship game. Coming up next here, you're watching the IHSA Television Network. The IHSA Football State Championships are being brought to you in part by Country Financial, proud partner of the IHSA, and by Layuna. Start your career in construction at layunacareers.org. I couldn't ask for a better agent, for a better company, in a disaster where you have no idea where to start. I learned that there's not a given in life. It takes a team. There's people that are going to watch out for us and they care. It's been pretty stressful. Once we saw Lori and got our plan, it's uh... like a huge weight lifted. Would you look at that? I'm in the classroom again. But this time, I can apply these skills to make some money. Lots of money. Family dinner with kids, not easy. You know what is easy? OSF On-Call Urgent Care. Get treatment for minor illnesses and injuries in person or connect 24-7 online. OSF On-Call Urgent Care.
Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. Matt Rodewald, Jack McInerney, Don Johnson, and Mark Kruger and our entire IHSA television network crew as we are set for our Class 2A state championship matchup. Two teams in a neutral site game, and they are not far from each other or here, for that matter. We get a look at the Tri-Valley sideline and head coach Josh Roop. And his 15th season with 125 wins. Trying to tack on another state championship to go with the, the one from 2015. And there's Mark Ramsey, one of the all-time best in Illinois. 335 wins in his 40th season. From left to right, the kick, and we are underway for our 2022 2A title game. And the return out to the 32-yard line, and that's where Tri-Valley and the Vikings will start. To the ISU keys of the game, create your legacy at Illinois State University. What are we looking for today, Jack? Well, it's going to be kind of interesting, you know, when we talk about teams that... Uh, that kind of spread the ball out, but tri is going to have to establish the run and control the clock because they know the type of offense that St. Teresa has. We expect it to be a little more open than our 1A game. Shotgun set for Andy Knox, the signal caller for Tri-Valley, and a big gainer on first down. And that's what we're going to see a lot of. Blake Regno, the All-Stater, the single-season touchdown record at Tri-Valley, single-season rushing yards record as well. And how about the single-game rushing record as well? Well, you know, what's interesting is they set the tempo right off in the first play, but again, St. Teresa, they've got to play good defense, and again, that first play shows you why we talk about defense, defense, defense. they got to stop him. Reganold again to the right side, following a blocker across midfield into the 49-yard line inside Bulldogs territory. Well, it's interesting now. Keep in mind, he averages 22 carries a ball game. And with that 22 carries, he averages 182 yards a game. Now, my next thing to that is, St. Teresa led 2A in defense. Are they going to be able to stop him and hold him underneath that particular pace? Reginald will take it inside the 46 and down to about the 45 yard line stop on the play by matt brummer the captain two-way star six foot one senior 90 tackles on the season among the team leaders well coach rope might have said to his kids you know look they led the, the, the uh, state in defense let's challenge them let's see what we can do against them offensively and he probably challenged that offensive line we're a minute gone by and Knox will keep it himself on the first drive of the game. He'll get to the marker. He might be short by about a half a yard. But this is the run pass option. And of course, Andy Knox has been a very integral part of that offense all, all year long. And the other thing that's really interesting is when you have a quarterback, he is also their punter. So that gives another dimension when you're in the punt situation. If you need to have a fake or whatever, when you have that punter back there who's a good athlete, that's just something to keep in your head down the line here. Just no guarantee they would punt. Third down and one, they'll get the first down. Reginald, but hold on, flags come flying in from the back judge and from the side. It's our first chance to hear from our referee from Blandonsville, Bill Farquhar. Is sorting out what the penalty is. A five yard face mask. And that should be enough to move it. Well, you know, the thing that you got to watch out, you saw Regano right off the bat start pounding the ball. In the semis against Baroa, he had 43 carries for 282 yards. In the quarterfinals against Knoxville, he had 417 yards rushing. So is he capable of putting up the big yump numbers? Yes, he is. Knox gets free in the right side. Flipped over at the 24-yard line. What a hit. And he gets right back up. And a pickup of about seven. Wow. 
you know, it's interesting in a, in a game like this, Knox takes the pressure off him a little bit because you can see that he has the ability to run with the football. Pretty good tackle right there, but he averages about 54 yards a game rushing the football as well as about 83 yards a game throwing the ball. So he gives them some versatility. Bryson Hendricks roaring in for the tackle. Reginald cuts inside the 20, and he's flipped over at the 16-yard line. Let's go through the offensive starters for Tri-Valley. And we talked a lot about Reginald. That 417-yard effort against Knoxville broke a 46-year-old state record at that level. The rest of the starters, you see Petrilli and Taylor and Stickling. They are two-way guys to go with T.J. Klein. And it's an offensive line that has picked up a ton of yards, both running and passing this year. As the starting lineup is presented by OSF. Reginald to the right side. Dragging tacklers with him all the way down to the 14-yard line. And they'll mark it, rather, back at the 16. Now, what's interesting about that run is they had him pegged right off the bat. They had secured the outside, but watch the power. He's hit right here. There's one, two, three, and he still picks up four yards. That gives you an idea of the kind of power he has, 195-pound senior. E.J. Willis, the senior captain for St. Teresa, he's... Uh, what am I going to do to try and tackle this guy? Knox tries to spin out of a tackle. He's carrying three guys. He'll maybe pick up a yard and present a very interesting third down from the nine. They got to get to the six. Now, that wasn't a big run by Andy Knox, but what it did is it made the backside defense stay home because they know that they can run some counter, so you cannot go flying to the football immediately. Got to watch out for Knox because he can run with the football also. Ninth play of the drive for Tri-Valley to open this Class 2A state championship game. We are scoreless about three and a half minutes in. And they'll give it to Reginald to the right side. He'll cut back in. A flag comes out, and that's going to come back more than likely. They'll mark it at the four. That would have been enough for a first down, but hold on. It's got to be a hold, I would think. Yep. So the holding penalty will move things back. You can see the hole right there. But watch the cutback right there. Just a nice job. I mean, he waits till he's right off the hip of that tackle and the kick out. Gives you an idea how well he runs behind his blockers. A really nice Sometimes block. kids don't do a good job of running off the blocks. He does. Nice block set up by TJ Klein. And that one you see him driving it back. Third and ten. Knox will throw to the right side to the corner. Oh! It's, pulled off. it's picked off at the one yard line. Billy Guys comes in for the pick to end the drive. And the stop for the Bulldogs. They get off the field. That throw came up just a tad bit short, but it required quite the athletic play. And the senior delivers. Watch it again. Two-edged sword right here. He, he has him, just throws him underneath a wee bit. A good cut up, but what happens here is it's kind of a two edged sword, as I mentioned, because now they're on the one yard line coming out. So they didn't score, but now they've got a long way to go to score. So this is kind of an interesting turnover right here. Bulldogs will start back up in their own end at the one. Here's Brummer to hand it off. Will he get out of the end zone? He will not. Safety. Two point start for the Viking defense, and they'll get the ball back on the safety. What a way to start out. You throw an interception, but you pick up two points basically off of that field position. Boy, you talk about penetration right there. What an effort. Royce Harper could not get to the outside. Instead, he's stuck in the end zone, stuffed for two points. The safety dance for the Viking defense, and they'll get the ball back up 2-0. Four minutes gone by. Black Friday is here at Menards, and we've got the perfect present for your loved ones with something for dad, mom, and the kids. Everyone in the family will get what they want, even your furry friends. Enjoy the season and the savings. Deck out the tree and stuff your stockings with these great gifts at amazing prices. Hurry in and save big money. These deals won't last long. Doors open at 6 a.m. on Black Friday. Save big money at Menards. How do you predict the future? You create it. You build a foundation. 
pave a path forward. Soak up the journey and turn experiences into something life-changing. At Illinois State University, we deliver on what every college should promise you, the opportunity and tools to write your legacy every day. The rest is up to you. What will you create? Create your legacy at Illinois State University. The IHSA Football State Championships are being brought to you in part by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs. And by ISU. Create your legacy at Illinois State University. Defense for Josh Roop and company getting a couple of points on the board. Of course, the head coach, the athletic director, the all everything. Josh Roop has uh, been there for quite some time, 15 years or so. And his staff, I'm sure Sean Kennedy, the defensive coordinator, thrilled with that safety to start things off with Tri-Valley now a 2-0 lead on St. Teresa as we are just underway for our Class 2A state championship game. Matt Rodewald, Jack McInerney with you here at Memorial Stadium down in Champaign. This will be a free kick, and it will be Billy Guys to do the honors from the 20. Quite an interesting start where uh, yeah. Tri-Valley drives the ball all the way down the field and throws an interception on the one-yard line, and then all of a sudden it turns around and creates a safety. So very unique beginning to this two-way state championship game. Kick is to the right side and dropped, picked up at the 40-yard line and stopped on the other side of midfield. That is... Grant Fatima. Let's watch the safety again. You know, got to go north-south in these situations. Watch the outside to the left, how he keeps, maintains position on the outside. Just a great job right there defensively, not allowing him to get to the edge. Fought off the blocker, kept his outside shoulder free, made the play, plus good pursuit, developed into two points. Tri-Valley will start with 7.47 to go in this first quarter. Reganold, who did a lot of the dirty work on that drive. We expect more of that. And he'll pick up three on that one. That really doesn't seem like much for him, but first down, as we mentioned all the time, is very important. You can't go negative. You've got to make those chains that move a little bit. I saw Joe Brummer there and Andy Knox. And Joe Brummer going both ways. There's about four or five Bulldogs going both ways. It'll be Knox on the keeper, and he'll pick up the first down. With so much attention to Reginald, the, the jet sweep fake opens the door for a big running lane there for Andy Knox. Andy Knox does a good job of reading that option. He watched the outside linebacker stayed with the the uh, sweep man or the motion man and he turned it up inside and again that's what you want is be able to move those chains knocks a th thousand yard thrower 700 yard rusher himself the team tries to turn the corner he'll get a couple and they'll mark it at the 34 yard line good job four first down so far excuse me matt good job of open field tackling right there and that's what you need to have get out the edge billy guys Came up, coming to the outside right here. Good job. Watch him come up and do a real nice job right there. That's just a really a good open field tackle because he gets to the edge. He's got some running room. Got through a couple blocks there. Low snap. Knox picks it up and runs with it, and he'll get the first down or real close to the marker. This Tri-Valley offense is moving the football. Well, and Andy Knox is moving the football with his feet at this point. Last week, he attempted one pass. Good job right here of maintaining his composure. It makes a big difference when you've got a senior quarterback that doesn't panic and just fall on the football in that situation, but picks it up and makes some yardage out of it. Probably the advantage of running RPO, you know, the run-pass option is, you know, you're just going to run with it anyway. Reganold picks up eight on that carry. Well, at this point, St. Teresa is being challenged as a top defense in 2A football. Reganold's numbers are eye-popping for sure. Almost 2,400 yards on the ground. He scored 32 times. You mentioned his numbers against uh, Moreau Forsythe. 43 rushing attempts. You don't see that anymore, but you may see that today just as much. 
as you saw last week. To the left side this time. And it's his eighth carry already. It's really the first time they've run to the left side. They had been in the entire drive in the first possession was to the right side. So now they're coming back to the left side. And you'll see some uh, some counters here by Knox, I'm sure, coming back to that left side. Tri-Valley with a 2-0 lead. They got a safety after an interception at the one-yard line. And this is the ensuing possession with five minutes to go in quarter number one. Reganold again. And he'll get it down to about the 14. Mark it at the, at the 12, I should say. That's just an interesting carry right there. I mean, it didn't look like he was going to get two yards, and he ends up getting about four to five yards. And that's what happens when you get a running back with that kind of power, 195 pounds. He keeps that legs going, but he has great upper body strength. They spread it out this time. Empty backfield, three receivers to the top. Reganold on the end around. He won't take it. Instead, it's Knox and stuffed right up the middle. E.J. Willis coming in and making sure that doesn't go anywhere. They have lost a yard on that play. Watch it again. Good job by Willis coming right up here to penetration right there. He wasn't taking any fake at all. He was coming right up the field. And had that been a quarterback draw and maybe one step to the left, it would have been a big play, but a good job right there by Willis making the play. See Amari Wallace in there as well, the team leader with 11 sacks on the year. So even in a throwing situation... On third down, Knox will throw and oh! nearly intercepted again. That and would have been down the sideline for six. Bryson Hendricks had it fall right in his lap and probably surprised him. So that was a laser. That's going to bring up fourth down and six to go. Watch it again. Yeah, he released that a little sooner than the receiver was expected. He hadn't cleared the linebackers yet. He hadn't cleared the linebacker to get into that open area uh, out in the flat. So that was a pretty good effort right there. But it could have resulted in six if he would have been able to hold on to it. Josh Roop a little indecisive on what to do on this play. So they take a timeout. And they'll talk about it. We'll take a timeout as well. Our score is two to nothing. Tri-Valley with the lead late in the first quarter here on the IHSA Television Network. Behind every Delta Dental of Illinois dental plan, you'll find members happy to know they can trust the tooth to help them save money on dental care. Find a dental plan that fits you. Get affordable coverage today. Behind every Delta Dental of Illinois dental plan, you'll find people smiling because they know they can trust the tooth to protect and take care of their smiles. Find a dental plan that fits you. Get dental. It's essential. Tri-Valley in a timeout talking about what to do in this key fourth down coming up. It is a 2-0 lead for the Vikings on the Bulldogs. Nearly a pick six the other way. Well, you can see right here that the, the corner comes up because he released the wide receiver for the safety to pick him up. So he came up to take that away and almost picked off one. And if he did, it would have been six points for St. Teresa. Vikings need to get to the six-yard line. Knox back to throw towards the end zone. Bumped along the way. No flag. And that is going to fall incomplete. The Bulldogs survive, and they will take over. I don't think big... it was enough for any sort of flag. Good coverage. Good coverage. It was a close call, but you're right. It could have gone in either direction. But you can see right here that he sets up. He's got plenty of time. Pretty good penetration, but the ball is... Put out right on basically on the money, but just good coverage right there on the goal line. It was the team that he's trying to throw to, and that pick at the one yard line and a fourth down turnover on downs. They're over two in the red zone so far, and St. Teresa has a 
has uh, dodged a couple of bullets here early on. And we're going to have to call a timeout. Bulldogs not organized. You saw Jack Singer come on very late. So a timeout with 338 remaining in this first quarter in Tri-Valley up by a baseball score of 2-0. Well, you know, situations like that. Now, that didn't look like much of a scenario, but you had to call a timeout. You're wasting a timeout. It was a needless timeout. I'd rather use it down when I'm in the red zone if I needed it for a crucial situation. But there was a personnel, somebody not paying attention. And as I used to say as a coach, you're paying too much attention to the stands and to the cheerleaders instead of knowing with the down and distance. And if you're supposed to be in on this particular package, you've got to pay attention. Take a look at Mark Ramsey of St. Teresa. Both these teams not too far away. Tri-Valley and Downs just outside of Normal. It's an easy ride right down I-74. What, maybe a couple of minutes, half hour, 40 minutes or so? And for St. Teresa, it's the other interstate. It's 72 coming over. So it's kind of a goofy triangle that we're looking at between these two schools. They played each other in the regular season from 2017 to 2019. They were supposed to play in 2020, but COVID, of course. And then they played in the playoffs in 2018. So very familiar these two schools are with each other. In fact, Josh Roop said, you know, I was hoping they would be there, St. Teresa, to see them again. There's a, there's a little edge about that between these two schools. Well, that's what you want. You want that kind of competition. You know, you want to get back and get an opportunity to play somebody that has done you dirty, I guess. <laughs> sort of things I never thought I'd hear from you today. Well. <laughs> As a look at Josh Roop, of course, second down coming. Royce Harper. Check that. That's going to be Jeremy Walker on the carry. And this rushing attack for, for St. Teresa, they've got a couple different weapons, not just Royce Harper. We'll talk about throughout the broadcast. Well, they want to get to the outside and use that speed. And they've got a lot of speed with the outside receivers. But what's very important defensively is you contain that speed by coming up and forcing it inside to your help, which would be your linebackers and your safety. Third down and four. They've got to get to the 22-yard line. Here's Harper, and he will get there. Can he get out of that tackle? He can. Scoots away to the 30-yard line and change. And move the sticks. That's a 12-yard gain after all that. Well, that was just an outstanding effort. I mean... You can see he gets to the outside, the garden tackle, just a good move right there, and he just keeps up with the effort, cannot hang on to that ankle, picks up an extra six yards after that. And that's probably one of the reasons why he had 1,400 yards and 20 touchdowns during the regular season. And that's an average, according to my math, of about 11 yards a carry, about 109 yards per game. That'll work. First down every time you touch the football. So first and 10, new set of downs. Harper up the middle this time, out to the 40, breaks another tackle. Andy Knox having all sorts of fun trying to drag him down the last two times. And keep Pretty an good eye effort on that. right there, Matt. Royce Harper has been battling a shoulder injury that he injured in the Athens playoff game in the second round, did not play against Pena, and limited action against... Uh, Johnston City, so he's just now feeling like he's getting back to normal, but he's taken a lot of the hits early on Well, this could is be a loss. Go ahead. Excuse me, Matt. This is a situation for coaches and for players. There's no tomorrow So, you know mending that injury he wants to play you can see right here though good penetration by the offense defensive line and linebackers that play was going nowhere from the get-go that's two-way star brennan taley six foot 210 pound senior for tri-valley making the stuff that makes it second down and 11. brummer will throw right side looking for walker and it's out of bounds He had a catch last week in the semifinal against Johnston City, a, a long gainer, but not there. And that's going to set up third and 11. Well, that was easy for the secondary to defend because he was the only receiver going out. They had max, max protection. And so when you only have one receiver, that allows the cornerback and then the safety to be able to help him out if needed. But there they actually used the sideline to help defend because the ball was overthrown. A pistol set. 
Fakes the handoff, look to throw over the middle. Walker open, and he dropped it. <laughs> Jeremy Walker was going to walk in for a 59 yard touchdown, but it went in and out of his hands, and it will force the punt. This is just a great throw right here, but excellent protection. Puts the ball right on the money on a post route and just gets away from him. Now, you expect the pros to catch that. You expect sometimes the college guys to expect to catch it. These are high school kids. Mm -hmm. Those things are going to happen. It was a drop in the open field. He'll come back and make a play later. And he knew it, though. He sure did. Because that was, that was six. It wasn't just going to be nope. a first down. No it was going to be feeling. six. That punt's going to be end over end, a little low line drive. And it's going to roll out of bounds inside the 30. Tri-Valley will get it back where they've moved the football on two possessions thus far. But still have not been able to punch it into the end zone. They've been very impressive offensively. Controlling the ball and moving the ball down the field. And then they kind of get stuck in the mud a little bit right at the end. But the, and I'm sure one of the comments that coach will make at halftime is we've got to be able to finish those drives. In other words, when you get down there, you got to be able to take advantage of the of the field position and score. Fresh set of downs and they start from the 26. Reginald will take it to the right side. And a chunk of yards to outside the 31. Now one of the reasons why he's making yardage when he goes to that particular side is because they had a, a uh, a setup where they had three wide receivers to that side, which forces one of the linebackers to move out a little further. So that loosens up that side of the line of scrimmage, and that's exactly where they ran to give him some room. And he takes advantage of it each time. Ten carries and 55 yards. And it'll be Fatima this time trying to follow a blocker and push backwards. And that will wind our first quarter. So we have a safety on the board. And that's it. But Tri-Valley has moved the football nicely in this one. A lot of work for Blake Reginald, the two-way star and the captain, has been busy here at Memorial Stadium. It's Tri-Valley with a 2-0 lead after one quarter play in our Class 2A state championship game in Champaign. Starting our second quarter, a 2-0 score, a safety 
for Tri-Valley. The difference in this one, Matt Rodewall, Jack McInerney back with you at Memorial Stadium. And let's send it to our third member of our broadcast crew, Don Johnson. Number two, uh, Tri-Valley quarterback Andy Knox has been doing a great job as a quarterback on the field, but his dad is up in the bleachers today recording everything through a camera on video. I don't know how he can do that, watch the game, watch his son, and videotape at the same time. And this is one of his other jobs. His primary job has been IHSA Assistant Executive Director of Football Championships. But today, he's his son's cameraman. Let's go back upstairs. You know, thanks, Don. For a guy like Sam Knox, who's, who's kind of running this event, that's that's really the context. Is he came into our booth. Hey, do you need anything? Do you need anything? No, you do your thing because we know you're watching Andy do his job and go be a dad for a little while. Well, do you remember what I asked him? I said, you got butterflies? <laughs> He didn't have butterflies running that camera. He had butterflies because his son is yeah. playing in the state championship game. And that was a parent's reaction. And uh, I think it's, it's fantastic the way he's able to, to do that. You saw him pacing. He yeah. wasn't pacing for the game to get started again. He was pacing because he was nervous about his son playing. And uh, I thought we had a nice conversation with him, and I thought that was great. Yeah, it, was, it was jittery and, and everything you'd expect from a parent knowing that their child's playing in a big sporting event, whether it's goals, basketball, volleyball, football, what have you. But I think the important thing, Jack, is that it paints the, the understanding that the folks that are running this event, the folks that run the IHSA, they're parents just as much as you and I might be with our kids invested in these state championships just as much as, as anyone else would be. No doubt about it. Eddie. And the thing is, you get these, and especially in 1A and 2As, more of these communities involved. And everybody knows everybody. And there's a good shot of Sam right there. And uh, chewing that gum, he looks like Kirk Ferentz there. <laughs> yeah, Nervous that, chewing. Make sure he's got a full pack because he might go through the entire, the entire uh, game and need a piece by piece every couple minutes. Uh, and he's yet to complete a pass, but he's been effective so far running the uh, and, and getting Blake his reads on RPO so far. Here's Blake Reginald, and he'll get the first down on this one across midfield. And that's the key. And he can run the football, too. When you have two weapons like that, a quarterback and tailback, you're going to get some opportunities to run the football for chunk yards. No doubt about it. And, of course, Andy realizes who really is the stud of this offense, and that's his running back. And you can see a good job right there by the left guard pulling and getting out in front of him. But he runs with such good power. Watch throughout this ball game, as we have thus far into the ball game, how many first hits he gets and does not go down with the first and second hits, picks up extra yardage after it. They'll give to him again. To the left side again. Pushes a blocker away from him. And he'll get about six or seven more. And he's very casual if you watch him. Mm -hmm. Getting back to the huddle. Saves all that energy. Looks like me. Looks like me getting back to the dinner table. Just taking your time. Nice and easy. But he's saving energy right there. Now the days of coaches saying hustle back to the huddle. No. Nope. It, not anymore. You want to make sure that you utilize it. Because typically these teams go quick. You see it again. Reginald. And he'll get the first down. Down to the 35. Maybe a little more. He's closing in on 100 already. And so far in this ball game, every single carry that he has made, you don't see one tackler on him. You see two or three tacklers on him. And this will be a perfect example right here. You see the guard pulling out in front of him. Brennan. Brennan get out in front of him, but he does not go down with one hit and always picks up three to four extra yards after the initial hit. 95 yards unofficially at the 34-yard line. And this time it'll be Knox carrying it inside the 30. And stopped on the play. Matt Brummer, the senior, having to make the stop. And that's a good run right there. He gets in behind everybody else and does a nice job of picking up five yards. And again, you need to do that on first down. It doesn't make any difference who does it as long as you get it done on first down. You have an effective runner at quarterback. You have an extra blocker leading the way on those design runs. Absolutely. And as long as the quarterback has the hands on the football, the secondary's got to think, could it be possible to be a run pass scenario? It's the ninth play of the drive inside the 30-yard line. The third drive where they've moved the football. Reginald 
gets to about the 26. Jack, when you see the quarterback in the run pass option set and he's reading before he hands off whether he decides not to, what is he looking at exactly? Well, in most cases, the first thing he's looking at is the defender that's supposed to play either one, either the pitch man or he. And you're looking for somebody that has no discipline. And I and I say the word no discipline, but that's not really what Football I meant. Discipline. Somebody, yeah. correct. Somebody that's got to take the pitch man, he's going to turn up inside. And if come on a quarterback, he's going to pitch it. Or in some cases now, they throw the ball down the field. Four down linemen. And up the middle that time. First down, pretty close. Real they close. Get to the 25-yard line. And you're always looking for that that line that that defensive end. Are they going to crash down? Are they coming upfield? Are they going down the line? And the and that part of that game it adds a dimension when you have a quarterback that can run. Not everybody has a quarterback that has that versatility or is an athlete at quarterback. Fourth down in inches. In shotgun again. Knox comes up. See everybody down in between the guards right there. And the play go inside. Play clock was winding down and a timeout. And it's going to be Tri Valley with 7.33 left in the first half. We will take a timeout. Big fourth down coming up for the Vikings. Can they keep the drive moving with a 2 0 lead on St. Teresa in our Class 2A title game? Is a big fourth down coming up for Tri-Valley. Matt Rodewald, Jack McInerney with you here at Memorial Stadium in Champaign. Tri-Valley has been able to move the football. Andy Knox and Blake Reginald have, have done the choreography of run pass option nicely against the St. Teresa defense, but the Bulldogs can come up with a big stuff here and get the ball back at their own 24-yard line. Power right. It will be Reginald up the middle. He'll Ooh. get just enough to the sticks, and they will mark it what looks like a first down, but maybe a football or so. Boy, you, you said that correctly. Just enough. You can see right here the surge, and he gets right in there. He gets right by the ankle, and just by being a little taller at six foot one, was he able to pick up that first down? It's Cole Klein with a nice kick up block on that one. This is their 10th first down of the half. And yet they only have two points. It's Saint, hard to believe. St. Teresa's barely had the ball in this one. Reginald inside the 20 now. He has carried it 18 times himself. And this is their third time in the red zone. He's a workhorse. There's no doubt about it. And what's ironic about this, and most of these drives, when he's carried the ball three or four times continuously, all of a sudden, then they'll go to Andy Knox, not mm -hmm. for a play-action pass, but to take the pressure off running goal so that Andy can run with the ball, who's very effective also. Two receivers to the right side, back to Reginald, and spins out of a tackle and gets dropped at the 12. It's good enough for a first down. What a nice run that was. He is over 100 for the day. You'll see him coming to the right here, hits contact, and he cuts back against the grain with people on him. And you can see right there, it picks up another four yards. Well, he's got he's got a real nose for getting that extra yardage. It's EJ Willis trying to make the tackle. 
He's had a heck of a time trying to find him and chase him down. They go power right this time. Reginald will take it inside the 10. Cuts inside of a tackler and all the way down to the five-yard line. He's got a unique style of running. It's not real flashy, but he cuts back against the grain. Watch the cutback right in here, right there. Just that little cutback picks up a couple of extra yards. Kind of a kind of a unique style of running, but a very effective style of running. And a oh. tough snap. Knox has to pick it up. And he is able to come up with it. They're lucky they didn't get a penalty out of that either. Yeah, I thought there was movement yeah. there also. Looks like they may have gone forward just a tad bit, but that goes backwards. Right here. Started a little early, and then the snap. That played a mess all the way around. And that's going to move him back to third and ten. Yeah, he took his eyes off the football right there. It was a high snap, but it wasn't a snap that he should not have handled. So the 16th play of this drive. Reginald will take it up the middle. Tries to bounce to the outside, and it's not going to happen that time. Monty Snyder in on the stop, along with Jacarian Jones. And so that brings up fourth down. They have kicked field goals. Or check it, they've kicked only four extra points. They haven't kicked the field goal all year, so they're going to go for it, no surprise. Fourth down and nine. Now they've got to, excuse they, me, Matt, they, they're spreading the field. Got to get to the two yard line. Throw oh. towards the end zone. Open man, and it's broken up. Guys again comes out. Knocks it away. He had the interception on the first drive, and he has the break up here. And that's three drives in the red zone coming up empty. And the Bulldogs bend but don't break. It's kind of interesting when we see this. I mean, they just basically move the ball down the field, but they cannot score. St. T holds up with their D. It's 2 0. Tri Valley on top. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> St. Teresa's defense holds for a third time, and they'll get the ball back with a 2-0 deficit here midway through the second quarter because of this breakup. Well, you see the safety, Billy Guy, right there racing over. Great speed and athleticism, going for the ball at the high point. He also made that big play when uh, they were driving in the last particular one. So defensively, they're relying on his quickness as the safety to get over there and make a play, and that's exactly what he did. Excellent, excellent touchdown saving play. That was a 17-play drive where Reginald carried it 12 times, and they end up with no points. And so frustrating day for Tri-Valley. They have not been able to punch it in. And that's why our score is sitting at 2 nothing. That first drive of the game, if you're just joining us, uh, result in the interception at the one yard line. Very next play was a tackle in the end zone. And so that's how the points happen. Other than that, it's been the story here. Tri-Valley trying to get in the end zone. Mark Ramsey's defense making big stops when they need to. Push to the left side, and it's Jones trying to escape a couple of tackles. And it'll bring up a long third down for St. Teresa. 
Now you see that number 33. It looks like that number's kind of spread out on that body. And the reason for that is he's 253 pounds. So he's a big running back. He's 5'9". He averages about seven yards a carry, but uh, nice job right there by Tri Valley of uh, shutting him down in the last two carries. See, we we'd freshen up the paint on the helmet, but uh, you know, <laughs> this time of year, <laughs> taking a couple of hits for sure. This is just their 11th play of the game on offense for St. Teresa. Brummer looking to throw over the middle, has a man caught. Foot race to the finish. Bryson Hendricks will sprint down the sidelines and get in the end zone for an 87-yard touchdown for St. Teresa. That was just an excellent route where he came back across the green, but even a better throw to put the ball right on the money. He never had a break stride, and he just outran all the defenders. Excellent throw, an excellent catch. Top of your screen, watch right over the top. He's coming across the field and wide open, just got away from that safety and down the field. Just a great throw and a great catch and picks up six right there. And that's the only big play they've had the whole day. That is the longest play of the year for St. Teresa on offense. 87 yards for the score and a big swing. Two point conversion try. They'll flip it around. Halfback pass to the end zone. Walker comes down with it, and the conversion is good. That was Matt Brummer. No, not Joe. Matt Brummer, the other twin, throwing it into the end zone for the conversion. Nice play. Not that poorly defended. But, uh, you know, when you're on a roll, you want to make things happen. And that secondary was still kind of in shock. So you go after him throwing the ball right again. Watch the top of your screen how he just settles in here. A late delay right there. You mm -hmm. saw how they cleared out, and then he waited and came in right over the middle where that safety was and throws the ball in there. Good job. Very good play calling right there. Walker held on to the football, and it's an 8-2 to two score. Jack, the Bulldogs had 30 yards of total offense before that 87-yard touchdown. Well, that's why in many cases you can look at a scoreboard and you can say, uh, and statistics statistics lie so often as far as scores and and what's going on in a ball game But that's a perfect example right there Tri Valley Dominated So far in this game and all of a sudden just one play and all of a sudden St. Teresa's back up on top Tri Valley been able to move the football here, but they haven't been able to punch it in in the red zone and Reagan old about 117 yards or so. Let's watch the touchdown again. Good little play action right there. Nothing real deceiving, but the movement of the back coming across the secondary is what really got him. The safety got caught up in that little fake, and it was only about a step of a fake, but it was enough to get him across the field. Good delivery of the football. Caught him in stride and just outran the defender. So with 3.03 to go, and if you're the Vikings, you're not panicking, but you know, how many opportunities are you going to get? Well, that's exactly a good point, man. I mean, they've been down there. They've moved the ball all the way down the field, but they just can't finish. Guys to kick it off. It will be taken at the 15-yard line. Reginald with the return. A lot of room to run. He'll get it all the way out to midfield. And Blake Reginald will take that kickoff a good 35 yards. And so good field position again for the Vikings. This is a good job of running, but it's also a good job of blocking right here. A little clip possibly right there. But you saw how he broke the tackle initially and still got 15 yards after the initial arm tackle. Now they need to score right now to go into the halftime and psychologically be rarely important for them to get a score here. Certainly the feeling you get. Reagan Old will get another eight yards that is 19th carry of the half I mean you're on pace for 40 that's a very heavy workload regardless of the level you know the reason I say it's important for them to score here is because they've dominated really offensively this entire ball game but they haven't dominated the scoreboard here's Reganold again on the left side First down and a little more. 
Clock's going to stop to move the chains with 2.17 to go in our first half. And St. Teresa holding on to an 8-2 to two lead. Going into halftime, if they don't score here, they're going to be second-guessing themselves. And the kids will be second-guessing themselves, saying, well, we can move the ball in between the 20s, but we cannot score. And you can mentally get down a little bit, especially with 17- and 18-year-old kids. But if they score here, it'll be a nice high for them psychologically. 12 first downs with just two points. Knox get about two yards. And this is a big drive, if I'm not mistaken. St. Teresa won the toss and deferred to the second half. So essentially, St. Teresa will be able to bookend the half with points if they can. You don't want that if you're a Vikings fan. At the 33-yard line. Knox will give it. Regal, a lot of room. Sideline. Guys will knock him out of bounds. It'll be a first down inside again the red zone. You know, I haven't charted, Matt, which I should have done. How many times they've run into the left. And they've run to the left probably 90% of the time on all of their drives. And uh, part of it is the personnel they have it on that side, but also the fact that they've been running to the short side of the field. So the defense has been kind of shifting or sliding a wee bit to the wide side. In the first quarter, it was the other way. So somehow they've, they've decided they like that part of the field. And a timeout on the field. 1.28 to go. St. Teresa with an 8-2 to two lead. Blake Reganold doing serious work. And... When you get a guy going like this, the Bulldogs have given up a ton of yards. They've given up a lot of space to run as well. How do you close that down? And they've done it nicely here in the red zone. Well, they're going to have to make an adjustment, obviously, to to uh, the run game and the run defense as far as either personnel or how they slide in one direction. Coaches come up that have been charting it up in the up in the stands, and they'll say, Coach, they've been running to the left side of their offensive line for 90% of their plays, so we might have to slide. By sliding, we mean they just make a gap adjustment and slide over to that particular side and force them. Maybe you take one man more by sliding, and it cuts down on the blocking scheme. Mark Ramsey, the head coach, you see there. His defensive coordinator, by the way, Britt Miller, who's familiar with this building. The uh, All Big Ten selection for the 2007 Rose Bowl team for the U of I. Played the NFL a couple of years, some special teams work. Fullback for the uh, 49ers and Rams, so he, he knows how to make those adjustments. It's going to be Knox all the way down towards the 11-yard line. Again, I guess that's, that's the answer to running, staying away from the left side is to run Knox back to the right side, especially if they're starting to slide a little bit in that direction. I think you got a face full of turf pellets. He's kind of reaching into that helmet there. Second down, they need to get to the five yard line. Reginald will try and cut it in. That's Ooh. not gonna work. EJ Willis says you're not going anywhere. And that will bring up another third down. And with the clock ticking, under 45 now. St. Teresa has one timeout to work with. Good penetration right there coming up and making a, a nice tackle. And that's what you want to happen. Elijah Wills doing a good job there. 190-pound senior. Clock running. Reagan old up the middle. Spins, and he will not get to the first down. The pile moves. That clock continues to run. He does get the first down. That's going to stop the clock. Josh Roop is out on the five-yard line trying to get a timeout for Tri-Valley, and he will do so with 15 seconds left in our first half. Now, how interesting is that? You know, in college football, that whistle was blown probably five or ten yards further down up the field than this. Just a great effort look right here. Just leg driving, and, of course, he gets the push from the linemen. There's got to be ten orange helmets on him, and he still picks up the first down. Give some credit to Colton Prosser and to Brett Taley, Brennan Taley, <laughs> the two guys kind of leading the charge, pushing that pile. So Reginald has got 27 touches on 44 plays so far, so we know it every other one at the very least. Just a good job right here. 
And so let's reset here. 15 seconds left in the first half. Tri Valley knocking on the door at the four at the three yard line is where they officially spot it. Obviously, you're at the the end zone here. You you don't have any timeouts. So what are you looking at from a play call perspective? You got to be very careful. Well, the way they've been running to the left side. I mean, I'd, I'd be looking at a bootleg coming back to the other side with a run pass option for the quarterback. And of course, we know that uh, Andy Knox can run with the football, but now also you then give him the pass option coming back away from where you send Reginald, and it's a it's a possibility. A lot depends on the discipline of the backside of St. Teresa. Will they stay home and defend that? Let's see what Josh Root dials up for the Vikings. This is a very big play. St. Teresa will have the ball coming out of the half. Knox takes the snap. Reginald will get it to the goal Go line. He'll punch it in for the touchdown. Three yards out. Tri-Valley breathes a sigh of relief by getting the touchdown in the red zone for the first time today. Good job right there. They just said we've been getting down the field all day long running to the left side. Let's do it again. And that was just a great job. Watch the left side pulling the garden tackle pull. Good kick out block right there. He turns up inside, gets into the end zone. They deserve that touchdown. But the other part of that is psychologically going into halftime for the drives that they've had in this entire game and not being able to score would have been a been a very tough blow for them. Key two-point conversion here. The same setup. Reginald can't get to the goal line just short. Maybe by about the length of the football. And so it looks like we will head into halftime tied at eight. That was a big stop right there by St. Teresa. That was an eight-play drive for 51 yards. Just a little under three minutes. But the two-point conversion fails. And let's credit Matt Brummer on the tackle on that one, keeping this game tied. That's the first red zone score we've had all day. Well, that was a pretty good surge by the defensive front of St. Teresa, as well as the linebackers filling the gaps. Turned into be about a 10-man front right there to stop that play. I, I sense a little blood on the jersey there. From Reginald. That's Get a, beat that's up a, pretty good. That's a tough look, though. Tough look. He's a tough kid. I mean, anytime you have, you play 13 games and you have 2,300 yards and 32 touchdowns, and he averages about 22 carries a ball game for 182 yards. That's about 8.3 per carry. And you've got 32 touchdowns. And here's the other thing to keep in mind. A lot of those games, the 13 games that they've played, that yardage, even though he's got 2,300 yards, he hasn't played the whole game. Jack, he's got 28 carries in the first half. That, That's a load you don't see at any level. That tells and, and you us. may never have, even in old school football. That tells you something about his condition. Of course, 282 yards last week. And 417 yards against Knoxville in the quarterfinal. So the yards we know, one thing, it's the carries, it's the amount of hits, it's the it's the workload, it's the it's the strength and, and the power. Watching that continue to to unfold. And he's not a back that you know sweeps outside and just gets touched by the safety and comes down. He's pounding up inside. I mean, you're right. He's taking a beating on every single play. Knox will squib it, and they'll fall on it at the 33 with 10 seconds to go. Now, St. Teresa has one timeout. It's hard to expect high school kids at any level to execute this. You're not talking about a field goal opportunity. But with 10 seconds, what can you do with with one timeout and 65 yards of field position. You take a knee. You probably do. And that's certainly what they do. That's certainly what it looks like they're gonna do. Joe Brummer will hit the turf and we will hit the break. Well, Tri-Valley's offense has been outstanding today. Took them a while to get in the end zone, but they got there. St. Teresa and Tri-Valley in a barn burn, tied at eight as we head into halftime of our Class 2A state championship game here at Memorial Stadium. I feel like we've 
when it comes to St. Teresa, we haven't seen them unpack everything that they have to offer offensively. Well, we're going to see it in the second half because there's no tomorrow. They will come out with the ball first. And we'll see how they come out with Brummer and Royce Harper and company. They were able to get a big play for 87 yards, the biggest one of the season for them. See if they can sustain anything offensively. Again, our score at halftime. We're tied at eight between St. Teresa and Tri-Valley. Let's send it downstairs to Don Johnson. We're down here with Coach Rube. What a way, what a crazy way to start the game with a safety. Yeah, I mean, our defense is playing well. They're letting one get behind us here, and our offense has got to quit stopping ourselves. Let's talk about the, the performance of Blake Reagan, though. Yeah. He has put the team on his back in the first half here. Yeah, he's been a workhorse for us all, all, uh, all year, so we got to get somebody else to step up, though. He can't do it the whole game. What kind of things do you have to get cleaned up for the half? We got to stop turning the or stop bobbling snaps and uh, stop holding. But uh, I want to say, hey, Steve Schaefer, Cole Martin, John Beerman, we're praying for you guys. All right. All right. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Thank you, sir. All right. Let's send it back upstairs to Matt. All right, Don. Thank you very much. Reginald doing a lot of the work. Gets rewarded with the red zone touchdown. We're tied at eight at halftime in our Class 2A state championship game here on the IHSA Television Network. From the days of the one-room schoolhouse, public schools have always been the heart of our community. It's where our students learn and are inspired to dream big, where we cheer on our teams under Friday night lights, and where parents, teachers, students, and loved ones come together as one. Now, more than ever, our public schools unite us. This message is brought to you by the Illinois Education Association, IEA, because we are stronger United. For extraordinary moments in life, you should never have to settle for ordinary health care coverage. That's why at Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, we put the extra in our plans. Extra me time to catch up on your faves with telehealth visits included. Extra peace of mind knowing a nurse line is here 24 7 for those unexpected moments. Visit us at bcbsilextra.com to enroll because extraordinary coverage should come with extraordinary extras. There are more than 20,000 ways to experience Illinois State. Hey, what's up? Ready to go to class? What kind of Redbird will you be? Hi. <laughs> Create your legacy at Illinois State University. Black Friday is here at Menards, and we've got the perfect present for your loved ones. With something for dad, mom, and the kids. Everyone in the family will get what they want, even your furry friends. Enjoy the season and the savings. Deck out the tree and stuff your stockings with these great gifts at amazing prices. Hurry in and save big money. These deals won't last long. Doors open at 6 a.m. on Black Friday. Save big money at Menards. The IHSA, committed to keeping student-athletes safe. Through educational initiatives and national partnerships, we're going the distance to develop safer protocols for our teams. Plus, we continue to improve scheduling and conditioning to reduce injuries from preseason through each state championship. 31 sports, 350,000 student-athletes, and one goal, player safety. The IHSA, the future plays here. Entertaining first half of action from Memorial Stadium in our Class 2A state championship game. The Tri-Valley Vikings and the St. Teresa Bulldogs all tied at eight here at the break. Matt Rodewald, Jack McInerney back with you here. It's really hard to say in terms of how close a game this is that the offenses have not been close at all. Time of possession, 19 minutes for Tri-Valley. How about four minutes and change for St. Teresa? Well, if you look at the scoreboard and you see 8-8, eight, eight, you're thinking, what a dull game. They haven't done anything. But this has been a very exciting ball game. There's been a lot of offense. There's been a lot of plays and a lot of unique plays. But what's happened is Teresa makes the big play when they need to. 
St. Teresa will have the ball coming out to start our second half. Let's send it downstairs to Mark. All right, thank you very much, Matt Rodewald and Jack McNerney. We thank you very much. Joined by our sideline reporter, Don Johnson, Mark Kruger. We're glad you're with us here. And, uh, Don, boy, the first half, we know about St. Teresa's defense, one of the best in the state. We also saw Tri-Valley's defense come up big, and that was the key to the first half. Yeah, it was a big duel. An odd way to start the game off, an interception, and then a safety. So we saw the defenses be active right away. Let's take a look at the first half highlights, and you see St. Teresa trying to get out of their own end zone. They cannot. Drendon Stickling and company were there to make the safety. Two to nothing Vikings at the end of one. Now, late in the second quarter, a little over three minutes to go. Play action. You see Joe Brummer. He goes long, 87 yards. Bryce Hendricks is off and running. He is in the house. And St. Teresa with the touchdown. And at the other end, it is a three-yard touchdown run by Blake Reginald. The two-point conversion was no good. So that is where we're at here at the half, 8-8. Eight to eight. And uh, both teams running the ball, moving the ball effectively. What can we expect here in the second half? Blake Reginald was the workhorse. I mean, he, he ran the football ball as many times as you could. And then if we talk about explosive plays, I always like to say the explosive athlete changes the game. A great throw by the All-Stater. Brummer down the middle, poised in the pocket, hits his speed guy deep, and that changed the whole game. A lot of action in that first half. We're tied at eight at the break. We need to step aside, and we'll come back here to Memorial Stadium. This is the IHSA Television Network. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium here on the campus of the University of Illinois. We are at halftime, 8-8, eight to eight, the Bulldogs of St. Teresa and the Vikings of Tri-Valley. Time now for the first half stats brought to you by Lyuna. Start your career in construction today at lyunacareers.org. And boy, look at the running, rushing yards there for Tri-Valley, 197 and no passing yards. And like the guys, Jack and, and Matt, were talking about, look at the time of possession, 1923 for the Vikings just a little over four minutes for the Bulldogs. And uh, Coach Coach Roop was talking to Don Johnson about somebody else getting involved in the offense other than Blake Reginald. We'll have to see if that can come true here in the second half. 
Tied at eight here of this 2A state title game. We'll be back with more on the IHSA Television Network. Want a great career? Join the Carpenters Union and be part of the next generation building our communities. With the Carpenters Union Career Connections Program, high school students get a head start on the industry's leading curriculum. Learn the latest in construction technology and the many skilled crafts the Carpenters Union represents. Plus, earn as you learn. Receive a nice paycheck, health insurance benefits, and best of all, no college debt. Ask your school district to participate in the Career Connections Program and get started on your future. This is the great state where you'll find hearts bigger, beating truer, and always wide open. Country miles with never-ending pride, virtues and values, and colors that run deep. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, we were born and raised in the land of Lincoln. And like you, we'll always be here, standing for all. Blue Cross and Blue Shield, nationwide strong, Illinois born. Black Friday is here at Menards, and we've got the perfect present for your loved ones. With something for dad, mom, and the kids. Everyone in the family will get what they want, even your furry friends. Enjoy the season and the savings. Deck out the tree and stuff your stockings with these great gifts at amazing prices. Hurry in and save big money. These deals won't last long. Doors open at 6 a.m. on Black Friday. Save big money at Menards. How do you predict the future? You create it. You build a foundation, pave a path forward, soak up the journey, and turn experiences into something life-changing. At Illinois State University, we deliver on what every college should promise you, the opportunity and tools to write your legacy every day. The rest is up to you. What will you create? Create your legacy at Illinois State University. Back to Memorial Stadium, where are, we are at halftime of this class 2A state championship game. Good ball game here at halftime. Eight to eight, the Bulldogs and the Vikings. As we welcome you back here to our coverage of championship football on this holiday weekend, we're glad you're with us here on the IHSA Television Network. My name is Mark Kruger, and we're going to send it back upstairs here to Matt Rodewald and Jack McInerney. And guys, we heard Coach Rube talking to uh, Don Johnson at halftime, and he said someone other than Blake is going to get half uh, going to get have to get involved in the offense. If that does not happen, can Blake carry this team to the promised land? Boy, I don't know, Mark. That's a big ask. I mean, 28 carries in the first half, that's a big workload. Even if you have 15 carries in the second half, 43 for the day, that, that's that's just a lot to ask. It for. really is, and I think what's going to have to happen is they're going to have to get the quarterback more involved. And we talked about earlier in the week the jet sweep, which has been a big play for them all year long when they run motion. They're going to have to do that to take the pressure off both the quarterback and the running back. they got to get out to the edge just to take a little pressure off and to loosen up that secondary. Quick look at the games coming up for the the rest of the day and tomorrow we're going to take a sneak peek at that real quick uh, we've got uh, IC Catholic in Williamsville IC, T IC Catholic's been very good all year long some are saying wait that Princeton game with the quarterfinal that may have been their this de facto state championship game of course Williamsville have something to say about that well I'll tell you what IC has been here several times as well as as we look at Providence Catholic and of course Sacred Heart Griffin so there's some people here that have been ha here and they're veterans they know how to handle things you and I are both looking forward to tomorrow to talk about the 6A state championship matchup between Prairie Ridge and East St. Louis. There is nobody that's been better in the state of Illinois than Tyler Vasey for Prairie Ridge. Well, tomorrow really is a big game, and as you mentioned, uh, all those players, and Vasey, of course, has broken all the records in the state of Illinois for rushing, and the thing is, he's not a running back. He's a quarterback, and that's from Prairie Ridge. So East St. Louis is going to have their hands full. Last year, they had to play against Kerry Grove, and the fullback was the big guy. So there's going to be some interesting adjustments tomorrow in that 6 eight game, but that whole program is a great day of high school football. All right, let's send it downstairs to Don Johnson and see what he has for us down on the field. Don? Down on the field with head coach Mark Ramsey. All tied up at 8-8. Eight eight. Your defense... What are you guys going to have to do a little bit differently to tighten things up? I thought you got good efforts out of your corners and your DEs. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that kid's a good running back, and uh, they've controlled the, the clock and the plays, and uh, we've just got to find a way to make uh, 
some better stops on first down, win first down, and uh, make them go to something they don't want to do. Uh, your electric play was the slant down the middle. We're going to see a little bit more of Joe Brummer airing it out. Well, we might have, uh, if we if we get uh, opportunities. Uh, you know, the, um, we we've got some kids that can run and catch and throw. So uh, we'll see if we get enough opportunities. Okay, what's the state of Royce Harper? He's fine. He's fine. Uh, he's he's banged up. He's been banged up for about three three weeks, yeah. but uh, he'll be back in there. Okay, let's send it back upstairs to Matt Rodewall. All right, Don, thank you very much. Of course, you see Mark Ramsey there. That is the smooth easiness of a man who's been there before for 40 years. Mark Ramsey's not worried. This is going to be a fun one in the second half. Come back. Want a great career? Join the Carpenters Union and be part of the next generation building our communities. With the Carpenters Union Career Connections Program, high school students get a head start on the industry's leading curriculum. Learn the latest in construction technology and the many skilled crafts the Carpenters Union represents. Plus, earn as you learn. Receive a nice paycheck, health insurance benefits, and best of all, no college debt. Ask your school district to participate in the Career Connections Program and get started on your future. From the days of the one-room schoolhouse, public schools have always been the heart of our community. It's where our students learn and are inspired to dream big. Where we cheer on our teams under Friday night lights. And where parents, teachers, students, and loved ones come together as one. Now, more than ever, our public schools unite us. This message is brought to you by the Illinois Education Association, IEA. Because we are stronger united for extraordinary moments in life you should never have to settle for ordinary health care coverage that's why at blue cross and blue shield of illinois we put the extra in our plans extra me time to catch up on your faves with telehealth visits included extra peace of mind knowing a nurse line is here 24 7 for those unexpected moments visit us at bcbsilextra.com to enroll because extraordinary coverage should come with extraordinary extras. We are set to start the third quarter of our Class 2A state championship matchup. We're all tied at eight. Tri-Valley and St. Teresa out of Decatur. Matt Rodewald with you alongside Jack McInerney. And on our crew, Don Johnson and Mark Kruger as well. We're glad you're with us here in Champaign. The sun is out. It is a beautiful day, about 45 degrees. We had plenty of fog earlier uh, well before the 1a game we weren't sure for a second but it cleared up nicely josh roop and company uh, can see pretty well they can see the finish line of a state championship if their offense continues to roll and uh, no doubt conversations in the in the locker room about adjustments and what they'll need to do to add more people involved offensively yeah, they, they've got to take the pressure off the running back. There's no way they can continue to run the way he has been running. But one of the things that's been really interesting, I'm sure he's probably talked to the kids about finishing. Mm -hmm. They had ran 45 plays in that first half, and 35 of those plays were in St. Teresa's territory. But yet, look at the scoreboard. They've got eight points. That's just almost hard to, co to concede. One touchdown and four tries in the red zone. So they were knocking on the door. One turned into a turnover, which ultimately resulted in the safety that got them where they are. And they failed on the two-point conversion. And so because they were able to even it up, that proved to be key with St. Teresa getting the ball coming out of this second half. The shadow's creeping over a little bit. Jeremy Walker, he'll return it. Looking to get to the outside, hit and bounced off a tackler, and he'll turn the corner and get to the 40-yard line Ooh. before being flipped over. And the Tri-Valley defender that made the hit took the big blow. That was that was Knox, by the way. Andy Knox. Watch this again, coming out of the shadows. And that play actually got 25 more yards than it should have originally. Good job right there by a quarterback, folks. Andy Knox, he's a quarterback, plays on special teams, he's a good football player, punts, kind of does it all for, uh, for uh, Tri-Valley. So St. Teresa will come out with three receivers to the right. Brummer will throw, and it's Walker to midfield. And stopped at the 49-yard line, being driven back. 
Now this is their way of getting the ball outside. Run these bubble screens to the outside. Put the ball in the hands of athletes that have great speed and mobility and see if they can do something in the open field. This is going to put a lot of pressure on the cornerbacks from Tri-Valley as far as open field tackling and also on covering routes. Double tight set now. Each back to the left. The handoff is Royce Harper. Plenty of room. And the adjustment for St. Teresa's offense gets a first down on their second play of this third quarter. When you open up things by throwing the ball initially and then you come back here with a little counter and you get the guard out in front, just a good job right there of misdirection after you throw the ball on first down. That loosens things up, gets that secondary and those linebackers playing a little looser and not as tight to the line of scrimmage. There's just their fourth, fourth first down of the afternoon. Pistol set. Harper up ahead. Driven back. And stopped. Nicholas Traugott. We haven't mentioned him very much. We're going to show you the St. Teresa lineups again. Just to remind you. Royce Harper dealing with that shoulder injury. Got the nod today. And Bryson Hendricks with an 87-yard touchdown. You saw Jeremy Walker on the kick return. Jacarian Jones has had some work. Noah Hayes, a straight-A student, who talked about the fact that he felt nervous being out here because of the fact that you're in a big stadium like this. An honest comment during the week to some reporters. Throw down the right sideline. Walker, that shoved out of bounds, and the late flag comes in. Andy Knox had two hands on him. It was, the question is, is it catchable? I don't think that's a factor in high school nope. football. You're probably right. Because initially, I think that contact was made before the ball was almost halfway down to the receiver. A lot depends on how far ball, ball has gotten there. You can see right here, hard to see. it's well overthrown, but the contact's, contact takes place about 15, 20 yards before that. Right there. Yeah. And really, there was nowhere to go for him. He's on the no. sideline. This is the way it starts out. Tough call on the, on the defender, but a good play for St. Teresa as far as field position. We're going to move the... They're they don't need any help. No, they're going to mark it at the 22. And that's a... It's a big walk-off. So first and ten, just outside of the red zone. Harper inside the 20, races towards the goal line. He'll get there. Royce Harper with the touchdown. His 21st touchdown of the year from 22 yards out. And St. Teresa in front here to start this third quarter. Well, that started out by the formation, and then the jet sweep look as far as the man going in motion across the 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 uh, formation made the secondary slide in one direction towards that motion and he came back against the grain and with his speed and athleticism took it into the end zone. Well, obviously he's got a bad shoulder but there's nothing wrong with his legs. Mm -hmm. Two point conversion try. Two minutes gone by in our second half. Brummer will throw to the right towards the goal line and he will get in Matt Brummer on the catch and the conversion and it's 16 to 8 St. Teresa in charge and they make the first move to start this second half a good one though so far in our class 2a title game Royce Harper feeling good from head to toe in the end zone for six and the Bulldogs in front
St. Teresa with a 16-8. 16-8 lead for St. Teresa. Mark Ramsey and company looking to win their first state championship in 43 years. Of course, Ramsey's history with Central A&M, a 30-year head coach, 1997 state champ, and runner-up several times, including once in 1996. And on the field on the other side, a guy named Jake Roop. That would be Josh Roop's younger brother who scored a touchdown to ignite a two-touchdown comeback. So we should probably not remind Mark Ramsey of right, such things. Exactly. Now, again, for Tri-Valley, they were a part of the Leroy Co-op for a long time and got their own program just 20 years ago. And so here you are uh, with their short history, so to speak, on the uh, verge of a second state championship as well to, to go with their 2015 title. Kick to be returned from the eight-yard line for the Vikings. And it's Reganold who takes it all the way out to the 32. St. Teresa with the lead. Just getting here has been the hard part. They've been thinking about it for a year ever since this game against Nashville. Nashville was in the state championship game, but they had to rally down two touchdowns with just seven minutes to go. And this was at Nashville with three seconds left. St. Teresa watched the... A game-winning field goal go through, and then this pass broken up, and that was it. So from here, you go into the offseason, and you've seen this before as a coach at the football level. Talk about driving motivation. That's going to carry you a long way, and it certainly did for St. Therese and the Bulldog program. Well, it, it carries a lot of carryover into the, uh, into the weight room and uh, spring workouts or getting kids out for track and then your summer workout. And the thing is, you're looking at that film several different times throughout all of that time. An interesting fact here, Matt, in that first half, uh, St. Teresa had three first downs in the first half. On their scoring drive here, they had three first downs in that drive alone. Knox with 12 yards in that previous play. Reginald stopped at the, maybe a gain of two. We haven't seen many of those. It's amazing sometimes how fast the tide changes. You know, the feeling is different in the building now after that drive. So it'll be a second down and eight. They've got to get to the 46-yard uh, line of the Bulldogs. Spreading them out a little bit here with formation. Two receivers to the near side. Knox will keep it. He'll sprint up ahead across Ooh. midfield. Gets knocked over by Billy Guys. We already intercepted one pass from Knox. This time he hits him pretty good. Knox has taken some hits. He's given some hits. He's going to feel it tomorrow. He really has. I mean, he's been a, a good athlete for Tri-Valley. But the thing is that right now that puts him in pretty good position here. And this could be actually two-down territory here for Tri-Valley based on the fact that St. Teresa all of a sudden has woken up offensively. Third down and two yards to go. Just three of six on third down for Tri-Valley thus far. Knox will give it to Reganold. Gets to uh -oh. the marker, but short. It depends on the spot. Ooh, that spot. And Interesting. Certainly looked like a friendly spot by about maybe a football length. Where did he have the football when he got to the 46-yard line? They're going to measure. They're going to take a look at it. Watch it again. Now, one thing to remember in this situation, you know, it's third and one, but the backs are five to six yards off the line of scrimmage. So theoretically, it's really not third and one from my viewpoint. It's actually like third and eight. Mm -hmm. And teams do this on the goal line in many cases. You know, they'll be on, on the two-yard line. And then the back will be six, seven yards off the line of scrimmage. Well, what happens there is the offensive line has to sustain their blocks longer because the back and or quarterback to get to the line of scrimmage as opposed to being in a power look, certainly in the in the red zone. Well, it gets tougher and tougher as we see more uh, spread sets, more RPO, run pass option, where that's a shotgun setup. There's no quarterback under center more often than not. Exactly. To get you that short yardage gain. Knox has been in shotgun the entire day. Reginald to the right side. He'll get about four or five, maybe six out of that. Good tough run right there. It's a lot of what we saw in the first half. And that's what they need. I mean, they need to have him come back. And the fact that uh, 
Andy Knox is going to be, I think, a, a very viable part of this second half because they've got to take pressure off him. They've got to come back with counters and get away from running with him all the time. And then the jet sweep look. Break it old to Knox's right. Knox will keep it with a lead blocker and gets to the 30-yard line. That will be another first down. But we talked about the fact that Josh Root wants to see someone help. And you had mentioned that Knox is probably going to be that guy. We're starting to see that just a little bit here in this drive. Well, I, I agree, and I, I think that part of that is, now that was just actually a quarterback counter. And basically all that is, it used to be a tailback counter. Now because they're in spread formation, because of the depth, they can run that with the guard and tackle pulling and getting out in front of that quarterback. And when you have a runner like Andy Knox that runs the ball well, that's a very effective play. Fresh set of downs, Reginald up the middle. And... That will be about four or five. And it was uh, Monty Snyder, the junior on the stop. It looks like that. Uh, it's a good shot of uh, of Blake there. Hard working young man. Keep chewing up yards on the ground, 240 yards for the Vikings offense. Reginald again slips inside a tackler and gets to about the 22-yard line. Now they're going to mark it at the 23. Now that run initially should have been stopped at the line of scrimmage, but he cut back so quickly underneath the opposing uh, tackler that he was able to pick up that extra yardage. He's got some really nice, subtle moves. Nothing real flashy, but very subtle, but very effective. Boy, a big opportunity for the Bulldogs to get off the field on third down. And, oh, boy, Reginald backed his way to the marker. He was hit at the 23-yard line. Still got it within, within a yard of the first down. Now that was quite the thing. play. Excuse me, Matt. Something here that you can see. Watch the way he gets a guard out in front of him, but he just backs up into that play. Now we've got about a half a yard to go. If the quarterback comes up behind the center for a quarterback sneak, some people say, well, that's the way to go. But you've got to remember, this whole ball game, he hasn't been taking the snap from center directly. Fourth down and less than a half a yard to pick up a first down and keep this drive going. Knox with Reginald to his left. He'll give it to him. He'll get the first down, and they'll move the chains. The clock continues to, to run, or we'll stop for the, the chains, but we're midway through the third quarter here, flying along here in our Class 2A state championship game. And this is something, Matt, we've seen Tri-Valley do through the whole ball game. These nice drives, moving the ball down the field, moving the chains, keeping that clock going. Then when they get down in the red zone, they kind of stumble, and they don't score. Still, the red zone woes, can they be fixed? Knox stopped from behind, and that was Amari Wallace, a six-foot senior in the backfield, making the stop. That was a good play. Watch, Wallace comes from the backside there. He comes right on the hip of the pulling guard or tackle. If you're a defensive line coach, what you tell your defensive lineman is, if that offensive person pulls, get in his hip pocket and go with him because he's going to take you to the ball. And that's exactly what happened on that play. Loss of a yard. Reginald looking for a running lane and getting back to the 15-yard line. A little more manageable third down coming up. But again, the Vikings in danger of not converting in the red zone. It'll be third and seven. They've got to get to the eight-yard line. Reginald does such a does such a nice job of running behind those blockers. He's so effective of setting up those blockers, getting up the field, and then after he starts making contact, he uses his power to sustain an extra couple of yards. Knox. Oh, he's wide open. Open in the end zone. Caught. And it's a touchdown for the Vikings. Cole Klein with a 15-yard grab. The sophomore. A chance to even it up for the Vikings. You think Sam Knox is jumping around somewhere after that, after that tape? What a nice play action pass. And of course, you go all the way down the field running the football. Eventually, something like that's going to be wide open, and it was. A Good play. Third call. down touchdown on play action, as you said. And there he is in the end zone, all by his lonesome. And now a big two point conversion try to try and tie the game. 
Reginald looking for somewhere to go, and he spins back, and that conversion will be no good. So St. Teresa allows the touchdown, but they hold on to the lead, and we'll take a timeout. 3.43 remaining in quarter number three. Sometimes they throw it here. Andy Knox finding Cole Klein for the score. school sports fans relive your favorite moments just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today another long drive chewing up some clock six minutes and 15 seconds with 13 plays and 68 yards but the two-point conversion fails and so st. Teresa and Amari Wallace and company Hang on to a two-point lead. Matt Rodewald, Jack McInerney with you here from Memorial Stadium. As we are set to get the kickoff here for a second uh, with St. Teresa getting their feet underneath them offensively here in the second half. Well, they really have. What happened is they're getting the ball to the people that can make the big plays. And they didn't really do that in the first half. No. And they're opening things up in the second half. Now, on that drive by Tri-Valley, they go all the way down the field really with good execution and get on the two yard line and they can't get the ball up inside here's Hendricks on the kick return trying oh, to get hold. to the outside that hold will yeah. come back yep Mari Wallace will get flagged for that one and so that return marked at the 32 for the second or for the moment I should say and this will come back uh, and take the favorable field position away. You can see the hold right here. He's got him by the armpit, taking him to the dance. Now see coaches, you know, they're upset about plays like this, but there's certain places where penalties really kill you. Mm -hmm. And they don't get up all upset when it's an active play, but they get upset when there's no play run at all or the clock's been dead. And it depends on time and place some oftentimes where that penalty occurs. Got to look at Thomas Harris for the Vikings, the freshman on kick kickoff team. Bubble screen caught. And Hendricks tries to spin free and he'll get out to the first down marker. Those flare outs try and get from edge to edge, trying to make them go side to side. Now that's the exact same play that they ran on their first play of their last possession. They're going to measure this on first down. They got nine and change. Did they get the 10? This will get either way favorable second and one. And it will be second and one because we're that far apart. We got another great crew of officials here in this in this ball game. Bill Farquhar, the Blandonsville native, is a cancer survivor, and bless him for being here and continuing to work hard as an official. Roger Smith and Nick Knowles out of Macomb, the linesman and umpire. Line judge is Carl Johnson from Geneseo. Dave Hasley from Abingdon, the back judge. The Western Illinois crew, and that pass incomplete. As they go down the sideline. But yeah, we're going to see Cruz from all over the state. That's kind of the fun part is that they get a chance to see different kind of football for themselves, too. And they deserve it. They've worked hard all year long. 
and they get evaluated during that. Here's a good, pretty good job of coverage right here. It is overthrown a little bit, but the Prosser does a nice job of staying right on his hip going downfield. So second and one, they take the shot. Third and inches. Some Brummer in motion. Harper will be Ooh. short. And the ball came out, but they're going to say it's down. So after getting nearly 10 on first down, they're going to have to give the ball back, presumably, from their own 25-yard line. It's going to be fourth and two. This is going to be interesting to see the call, but right here, a nice job defensively. That's but I got a feeling that here that they might there. not be kicking. You know, we haven't talked about this before, but... The gentleman that hasn't been in the ballgame for a while is that big 253 pound running back. And there he comes. Jacare and oh, Jones. There he is. They must have been listening to me or something. Joe Brummer is the punter as well. And I think they I think there's some indecisiveness I, they I want agree. to figure this out. When because, you're talking about your own 24 yard line with a two point lead, and your defense hasn't really been able to get off the field very well. They have in the red zone. This wouldn't normally happen. If these teams were in the situation where they do a lot of punting mm -hmm. and both of these teams are such high scoring teams and so effective they don't punt the ball a lot so consequently you're talking about a kid that's got to make a long snap and the punter that's got to be able to kick the ball down the field with some accuracy so you know I mean it's a big game there's no doubt about it but this is a real tough call right here because Tri Valley moves the football on the ground Joe Brummer has a Punted the ball 11 times all year long for That's, an average of 31 yards. Well, think about that. 11 times in, all year long in 14 games. It's unbelievable. And it does not look like they're going to do it here. Although now they will, could try and jump them off. I will say this is quick kick territory. They're going to give it. And he'll get the oh, first bye down. Bye. And a more down the sidelines. No one will be there for him. E.J. Willis, touchdown, Bulldogs. Well, they gave the impression that they were going to run the ball up inside, and he bounced outside on the edge and turned the speed on, and Tri-Valley was squeezed inside looking for something off tackle. They didn't contain, and down he went into the end zone interesting play call now whether or not that was play was called for it to bounce outside or that was the athlete making something happen at this point we won't know till the end of the ball game when we can talk to the coach how many times have you seen it on fourth and short when everyone's crowding the line of scrimmage if you can get to the outside gone it, well that's the case and that's probably what happened right there no doubt about it we're about to see an extra point for the first time all day billy guys will kick it Brummer will hold with an eight-point lead. High snap, and it is up and good. Looks like they've done that a few times. And so that makes it a two-possession lead. Let's watch this touchdown again. Well, let's see exactly where he goes if he starts out inside and bounces it outside. Yeah, right there. He bounced it outside. It was designed to go inside the tackle, and that's just an athlete with great speed being able to get down the sideline and uh, turn it into a touchdown. The play's designed to go off tackle, which could have been a negative play and turned over to Tri-Valley, but yet he turns it into six points. You can't coach that or teach that. That's just a great athlete. Bulldogs own the line of scrimmage on that play, and it... Willis did the rest of the work for 76 yards and the touchdown. That's two big play touchdowns that St. Teresa's had. We've watched Tri-Valley work and work and work their way down the field. The Bulldogs with big plays, lightning fast. And they're the ones with a nine-point lead here in this third quarter. Well, they've got a little more speed out in the edges with wide receivers. They've got a lot, quite a few more big play kids than Tri-Valley does. And they really didn't take advantage of that in the first half at all. But in the second half, they opened it, opened up with that and let those athletes make, make, make things happen. And that's exactly what they did. So they'll go back to work with Reganold. And Blake Reganold, you see there, he needs a, a whole three carries 
for the 2A state record on just carries alone. That's hard 39. to believe. That's how much work he's already done. We got a whole quarter of football to play, and you would imagine he'll get a lot more. The problem is, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, 13 plays, 6-14, taking so much time, and then it's boom, back the other way. And that offense is tired because they don't get a chance to rest Even some of those guys that are not two-way guys. Exactly right. Good point, Matt. And the other thing is, how many records can you set? Mm -hmm. We had a penalty, I believe. We have a illegal procedure. Oh, they didn't. To move it back and there's some confusion. Did, did we have a call? We, I don't I believe think, we I don't even think we had a call yet. I'm trying to the officiating uh, crew is that's I, yeah, he, I was gonna say he, he was offside. I don't want to make a call before the official did, but uh, that's a very unusual call. But we've seen a, quite a few unusual things going on. <laughs> You just never know in a state championship game. And you never know with high school football. That's what's so great about it. So we'll just try and get a normal kickoff done. Guys will let it go. It'll be low. It's a live ball that bounces. Drop. Fatima picks it up. And they'll have nowhere to go. They did not want to get it to Blake Reganold. And that will be where the Vikings start first and 10 at their own 31 yard line. Blake Reganold, he is, we're just going to call it the country financial player of the game. Find out why over 1 million families let us protect their lives and livelihoods. Visit countryfinancial.com for more information. We know he's going to set a state record in terms of carries. 190 yards already on the ground with one touchdown. Get about five yards every time he touches the ball. And he's doing all the work. And here's Knox coming with it now. Has a lot of space. He couldn't get to the outside, though. And it's a pickup of only three. Kind of gives you an idea of what kind of an athlete and a competitor that Eddie Knox is because he knew right there, if it hadn't been that shoestring tackle, he had a lot of room up ahead. You watch it again. Right there. Oh, he had some running room outside. He Watch did. the frustration right there. That's a competitive young man. I'm sure his dad, Sam, thought that he was going to break one also. Knox to throw. Open man down the sideline. Oh. And it's caught. It's caught. Grant Fatima. Big play for the Vikings to move the ball down the field. What a nice throw and a nice catch. Fatima. 33 yards on the catch. And, you know, this is a tough catch because look at the shadows in the sun. Here's the concentration oh, right man. there. I mean, that's really a tough catch for a young player. That is directly looking into the sun. You're right. Fresh set of downs. Fumbled snap. Reginald comes up with it. And about two and a half yards. So Reginald will make it second down and seven. Boy, you can see the shadows and how long they are. Here we are at the three o'clock hour. At the north side of the stadium, pretty much covered in shadows, but it's that glare when you look back towards what we can see is Assembly Hall, State Farm Center. So the, at the exact angle to make that catch, Knox now to run. Not much. You got to give a lot of credit right there to the defensive people for uh, St. Teresa. That Jeremy Walker right there was the backside. He stayed home. And what happens is oftentimes with the fake, especially how well that Reginald is running, a lot of times they want to slide and go after him. But he had good discipline. The backside, he stayed home, and he waited for the quarterback to come to him. And that's just really good coaching and good discipline by that athlete. Third down and five. Reginald around a blocker slips inside short of the first down by about a yard. It's going to be at the 24. And you can see he is sore and really in pain. You got to give some credit to this offensive lineman. They get out in front of him, and it's not always that they make a great block, but they tie people up vision wise and physically so he can run off of those blocks. 
That's how our third quarter is going to end. 12 minutes to go. Tri-Valley driving, down by nine. We've got a good finish coming from Champaign in our Class 2A state championship game for Memorial Stadium. Stay with us on the IHSA Television Network. Big fourth down coming to start our fourth quarter. Matt Rodewald, Jack McInerney with you at Memorial Stadium in Champaign. Tri-Valley down by nine to St. Teresa. They have the ball and a chance to keep the drive going on fourth and one. Reginald will keep it, get the first down and inside the red zone. Blake Reginald with that carry breaks a 32-year-old record. That's his 39th carry of the day. The old record held by Paul Bauer from Seneca. Set back in 1990 in the Class 2A title game. That was in the old six-class system. But 32 years have we seen somebody carry the ball this much in a state championship game. In the 2A. Yes. Because I, I think in, at Joliet Catholic, Isaac had That's a right. big Ty day. Isaac had plenty of big days. Here's Knox inside the 10 and down to the five-yard line. Good Andy job. Knox getting more comfortable. He's taken some hits and delivered some as well, but he's getting involved. And it's been a bruising game all the way around. Really has. Good job right there by Andy Knox. You could see that he was going to go to the outside. He's been taking a beating, but a good football player. And that adds a new dimension. I shouldn't say adds a new dimension. They've been doing it all year long, but it's been a good dimension for them today in this ball game. The team is spread out wide. It's Reginald again to the goal line. Touchdown, Tri-Valley. The Vikings back in it to start this fourth quarter. And they get a little bit closer with 11.07 to go. 203 yards on the ground. And for Reginald, his second touchdown of the day. And his 34th touchdown of the year. Tri-Valley will go for two. Of course, that's a Delta Dental fourth quarter touchdown. You can tr trust the tooth to protect your smile. Learn more at deltadentalil.com. And their two-point conversion last time out failed. This time around, it's Knox on the keeper, and he's going to get the points to get it within one. Good play call there. They took Regan only went to the outside with him. But what a good effort right here by Blake Renegal to get in the end zone with this touchdown. Good job of blocking. You can see number 50 getting out in front of him. Brennan Thiel 
And that's what they've been doing all day long is they've been pulling guards and tackles, getting people out in front of them. But the key to that is that he can run off their blocks. You can see the cutback right there to get in the end zone, lowers his shoulder and just powers it up inside. And uh, he runs a lot harder than a kid that's only 195 pounds. Reganold, 197 yards on the ground today. A little over 200, I should say, at this point. He's not even breathing hard. You see he's wincing every now and then when he gets hit, stands up, takes takes a second. Just getting off the elevator here. I was kind of panting. Well, there's an eight, you know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to go down that path. <laughs> Conditioning is everything, right, Coach? You're right. There you go. You're that's, right. That's what really what it comes down to. i got to get more time on that treadmill. <laughs> that makes two of us. So, St. Teresa, we started to see them move the ball a little bit. What do you expect to see with this drive coming back? Well, I, I'm going to see what, what they did start in the second half, trying to get the ball to their athletes that can make plays in space. They really didn't do that in the first half. Part of that was because Tri-Valley moved the football all over the place and dominated in the first half. And then, of course, right in the second half, St. Teresa comes out and starts getting the ball to their athletes out in space and allowing them to make plays because they've got good speed. We'll see if uh, Sean Kennedy, the defensive coordinator for Tri-Valley, has something dialed up for this St. Teresa offense as well. And the kick. Uh, bounces in no man's land. Now it has to be picked up at the one by Walker. Vikings defenders only uh -oh. choked the guy out of his Ooh. shoes. And Walker gets all the way to the 20. And so that's where St. Teresa will start. This is really kind of an interesting call here. Now he breaks it back. Now there's speed right there. You can't teach that. And that saved them about a good 15 yards of getting away from the end zone and getting it out in manageable position. Jacob Bischoff's going to want that replay back. You saw him get juke on that one. But, you know, when you let one go like that, that's the danger. It lands right in the perfect spot. St. T now in offense. Pushing out to the 25. Ball comes out. Ball's loose. And it Ooh. looks like St. Teresa came right back on it. And they did. And that was that was Noah Hayes who landed on it. What Watch a it big, get ripped out. What a big turnover that would have been right there. And that's all second effort right here. And you can see he pulled it out. I mean, it wasn't as if that just came out. He yanked at it. That was Bischoff coming back on that kick return and doing that the very next play. Talk about on to the next play. That's outstanding. Second down and one. And it'll be a first down. And that will be Willis after that big touchdown run of 70 yards change. He comes back. And that and play was ball. designed to go inside. And again, being a good athlete, he started inside and then he had to just quick, the quick jump stop, got to the outside and made a first down. Brummer will throw. Right side, it's Harper caught and drilled. It's a first down. Unless they said he did not hang on. They're calling that incomplete. Look, a pretty hard hit. Wonder if it knocked it out. Could be. The throw looked like it was right on the money. Oh, nope, yep. never had it. I think he saw it coming and didn't want any part of it. That's tough coming over the middle like that. It certainly is, especially when you know you got a free safety or that linebacker right there because he didn't go deep enough out of the linebacker's drop, and so that linebacker had a good shot at him. Ten-minute mark of this fourth quarter. Second and ten. Brummer will throw. Hit as he's thrown over the middle, and it's caught at the 30-yard line. Bryson Hendricks again. His second catch of the afternoon for 38 yards this time. And St. Teresa moving the football. And the coverage wasn't that bad. You can see a little roll. You can see him. He gets a post drop. The, the defenders are trying to squeeze inside, but the ball is just thrown over the shoulder. Really an excellent throw. And now all of a sudden, they've got great field position. Brummer with more than 100 yards passing. And they flip the field and get on the other side. Now at the 29-yard line. Brummer under center now. 
He'll hand it off to Jones, who rumbles his way inside the 25. Now, coming into this game, Matt, Brummer threw the ball about 11 times a game, even though they had this great running game, and he completed about seven for about 128 yards. So he's already at 100 yards, so we knew coming in that he could throw the football when need be, but they always tried to make sure they were in a play-action situation where it could be a, a big play for him, and they have taken advantage of that thus far in this game. They've been efficient all year with the passing game. Doesn't that necessarily mean it turns into a ton of yards, but very good at it when they need it. Second down and three. Jones bounces outside. Tries to get to the sideline before being taken down in bounds. And that's going to be a first down. Joe, Joe Brummer here handing off to a big, big 253-pound running back who makes a nice cut right there at 5'9". He's got all that power, and it's tough to bring him down. But he's got some speed in there. You can see a little paint coming off of there. A little? It's a lot. It's a lot of paint. It's a lot of paint. They're going to have to redo that helmet. A whistle and a flag. You know, back to Jones real quick. At the 2A level, you don't see anyone with that size carrying the ball with that kind of speed or shiftiness. That's just really hard to prepare for. You're exactly right, Matt. You do not see it at this level. You'll see it more tomorrow, see tomorrow yeah. with some of these kids. They're a lot bigger and faster. So they're taking advantage of his size right down here. But, you know, one of the things that interests me is that, you know, St. Teresa, Joe Brummer made the big throw there with a little pressure on him. But the thing that I like about him is he's the quarterback. He's a straight A student and, you know, and still a great athlete. How do you find the time to study like that? Pitch to Walker inside the 15 after a five yard walk off. We've we talked a lot about, uh, you know, it's been fascinating talking to these teams and talking to the coaches and, and getting to know these programs this week, at least what's going on with them as we follow them throughout the year. But, man, there are a lot of academic standouts and Illinois State scholars and, and people that are, you know, that, that clearly are doing just as much of the hard work in the classroom as they are on the football field. Absolutely, and that's what this is all about. That was a nice run by Jeremy Walker. But we've got so many kids that are scholar athletes and represent themselves so well in the classroom which is very impressive. They've got to get to the six. Jones, nowhere to go. Stuffed immediately. And it was Drendon Stickling leading the charge alongside Blake on the other side. Blake Reganol playing defense. Good job right here at penetration, right at the top of your screen. He kind of split the gap in between the, and the outside linebacker closed it down and that's the way to play defense right there. Let's give credit to Brennan Taley as well on that one. Good shot right there at Jones and talking about athletic. I remember uh, Woody Hayes at Ohio State one time told one of his athletes who had four F's and a D. He consoled the young man. He said, you know what, son, you're spending too much time on one subject. <laughs> Ninth play of the drive. Trying to bounce it to the outside and stopped at the nine. It was Willis as Hendrick had to be helped off on the previous play. Brummer comes back over to the sideline. This is fourth down. Big stop here. If Tri-Valley can get off the field here. It will open the door for a potential game winning drive. They need to get to the six. And did somebody move? Oh, they didn't call they it. They didn't call anything. That's what you got to watch. And St. Teresa is going to have to call timeout. The That's Brummers exactly are asking we, questions about why there wasn't a penalty call. That's exactly what we talked about, Matt, those kind of penalties. When do they occur and where do they occur? That would have been one of those. That would have been in the wrong side of the of the slate, so to speak. One point game, fourth down coming up. There are more than twenty thousand ways to experience Illinois State. Hey, what's up? You ready to go to class? What kind of redbird will you be? Hi. <laughs>
Create your legacy at Illinois State University. Black Friday is here at Menards, and we've got the perfect present for your loved ones. With something for dad, mom, and the kids. Everyone in the family will get what they want, even your furry friends. Enjoy the season and the savings. Deck out the tree and stuff your stockings with these great gifts at amazing prices. Hurry in and save big money. These deals won't last long. Doors open at 6 a.m. on Black Friday. Save big money at Menards. Fourth down and four coming out of a timeout. St. Teresa with a one-point lead and trying to punch it in the end zone, quite possibly to get a two-possession lead back. Tri-Valley trying to get the ball back. They've got to get to the six-yard line. Brummer will throw it. Looks left side. Open man. Guys, did he stay in bounds? Yes, he did. Touchdown. St. T. Nine yards out. What a... What a throw right there. You talk about money, a money throw as far as timing and putting it right on the money away from the defender where it can't be picked. Great route, but an excellent throw. A Delta Dental fourth quarter touchdown that you can trust the tooth to protect your smile. Learn more at DeltaDentalIL.com. Well, that ball was released before he made the cut. That's two feet down. That's, that's Sunday-esque. It sure is. Outstanding effort. Now, two-point conversion coming. This is this is key. And Josh Root knows it. They're coming out fast to give them some kind of a strange formation to make things happen real quick. Brummer barely in time for the play clock. He'll throw right side, and it's poked away and deflected and knocked away. That keeps it a one-possession game. 29-22. We'll take a timeout. 6.06 remaining. The Vikings will get the ball back, hoping to even it up after this beautiful pitch and catch. Billy Geis tip, tiptoeing. And the... for a better agent, for a better company, in a disaster where you have no idea where to start. I learned that there's not a given in life. It takes a team. There's people that are going to watch out for us and take care. It's been pretty stressful. Once we saw Lori and got our plan, it's... Uh... Like a huge weight lifted. The IHSA Football State Championships are being brought to you in part by Country Financial, proud partner of the IHSA, and by Layuna. Start your career in construction at layunacareers.org. Seven-point lead for St. Teresa with 6.06 remaining, and Tri-Valley will get the ball back in our fourth quarter of the 2A State Championship game. The buzz is in the building because Tri-Valley will get the ball back with just about enough time to run a full drive and their full complement of plays. You can't expect anything different but Blake Reginald. Well, you know, that's very true, and you're going to see a little play action, I think, because they're going to start biting on a couple of those things that take him away. But I'll tell you what, this has been one really exciting football mm -hmm. game. Just back and forth, a lot of good offense, very good defense, not much in the special team situation, but... Just been a good, good, solid football game. So guys will do the kicking duties. And it will be, it will bounce back. Cade Danko on the return, and he'll bring it all the way out to the 42-yard line. And so that's where we will start for Tri-Valley. Our 2A game will be followed by IC Catholic and Williamsville. Here's the whole slate. A pair of 12 and one teams in our four o'clock kick. That will get going. Uh, and then Providence Catholic and SHG 
Ken Leonard's final game as the legendary head coach of the Cyclones trying to finish off a 14-0 season. This first play is going to be crucial. Here's Knox slipping to the left side and picking up about four. Good field position starting for the, the Vikings. And Knox, of course, he's this first year of football. He played golf last year, decided to play golf because they had, you know, they had a quarterback in place already with Andrew Petrelli. Now he comes into it, and he's continued to work at it, and he's now on the verge of a special drive here if they can pull it off. Reginald gets to within a yard of the first down marker. Well, it's four down territory all the way here, but the thing is, you're talking about Andy Knox, a kid that's a straight-A student or a young man that, you know, that's a really a good athlete and has a great background. He comes into this. These are all his buddies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they want him to be part of that package. He knew they were going to be pretty good about it. And I'm sure maybe his dad, Sam, might have talked to him a little bit about you can play golf the rest of your life, but you might not ever be in a state championship football game. Best game of the year, best game of his career in that Wilmington game that everyone in Downs talks about. It's going to be Reganold at the first down marker. He should get it. And they'll move the chains with five, uh, 4.50 to go. And one of the things, too, Matt, in this situation here is the drive, as you mentioned, is something that's going to be very important, killing that clock, mm -hmm. because the team that's got the really the big athletes on the edges to make the big play is St. Teresa. So you don't really want to give them the ball back with much time left on the clock. 42 carries now for Blake Reginald. Some places will call that child abuse. I mean, it's amazing <laughs> the stamina that he has. And in motion. Cross direction to Reginald. He had to get by one defender, and that was Wallace. That came in very late. That looks like a face mask that might move the chains. Big play if it is. The Tri-Valley sideline jumping up and down. At a better angle than we did to see it. Yep, face mask. Watch it again. Stiff arm from Wallace, and then right oh, there, yep. yep. Good call by the officials. Brummer got tangled up, trying to go high, and that is a big one, too. That's going to move it all the way down to the 32-yard line. Well, he's going to be a magnet right now for at least three or four defenders on every play. So Andy Knox is going to come into his own here with some bootlegs or some plays himself. There, there he, he goes. Is. Getting to the corner and getting inside the 30, Ooh. taking a big hit at the 29-yard line. And that'll be a pickup of about five. Some of the hits he's taken today, Matt, you, he's going to probably wish he was back in golf. It's a lot of hits. He has really taken some big hits. It's a lot of hit checks. It's a lot of hits like this where he's just getting undercut. And those are the ones you feel the most the next day. Well, we got some, I don't know what's going on here. We had a flag. And I, I don't know for what. And Josh Root across the way is That's absolutely furious. And I'm not sure what the... We're going to call a holding penalty on that. That, that, hurt. that is a monster penalty to take it all the way back out to the 43-yard line. I didn't see it. And Josh Roop is furious. You can see the look on his face right there. Oh, right there. Knox put the ball on the ground. It's loose. Did St. Teresa come up with it? Yes, they did. First down, Bulldogs. Their second turnover of the day. And it couldn't have come at a better time for St. Teresa. Well, it's been a hard-hitting game throughout. There's a good shot of Coach Ramsey telling his kids, hang on to the football. Oh, you can see why that happened. He's trying to right tuck after it in. the fake. Never had, had a chance to it. do nope. it. He really never had a chance to put the ball away after the fake. And so three timeouts, or rather Saint, uh, three timeouts for Tri-Valley. They will need to use them to get the ball back. 
But they'll have to put St. Teresa uh, behind the chains, so to speak, with 339 left. Don't need them yet. Watch it again. And that was E.J. Willis knocked it out. And the Bulldogs taking a long time to get this play in. It's the second down and seven. They need to get to the 46 of the Vikings. Play clock at eight. Jones with it, stuffed at the 50-yard line. And Josh Rook will spend his first time out right here. Amari Wallace recovered the fumble. Hoping that will be enough to clinch St. T's first state championship in 43 years. They're feeling it on the sideline. But they still have work to do to put well, this one away. We talked about the lack of turnovers in this ball game. We had one real early, which resulted in an interception and the safety, mm -hmm. but this was no turnover bigger than the one we just saw. Yeah, everyone seemed to settle in and protect the football. And, you know, considering the run pass option setup where the ball's in the mesh, we're surprised we don't see it more often, to be honest with you. Sometimes that indecisiveness, but Credit to the kids. They've been very good in fundamentals, and they've, they've been able to handle the mesh just fine. Plus, they've had 13 games to work on. Mm -hmm. So they're coming into a game right now where, you know, it's not something that's new to them. They've been working on it for 13 weeks. And then prior to that, you know, they had uh, summer practice. So, I mean, there's a lot that goes with the option attack. And, uh, you know, we talk about championship teams. Championship teams take advantage of field position. Championship teams take advantage of turnovers. And uh, that's basically what happens this weekend. We'll see. Here's turnovers and uh, situations. Big third down right here for Tri-Valley. And Walker will get to the first down marker. But where will they spot it? Right on it. Looks line. like it might be shy. But by how much? They're going to mark it a half yard short. The clock continues to run. It's going to be fourth down. And a half a yard, they're going to stop it. Watch it again. He needed to get to the 46-yard line. Good effort. Broke through one tackle. How about Grant Fatima there with the stop right at the stick? Excellent effort on his part. That might have been a game-saving tackle. They're measuring now. It's going to be short. By at least the length of the football. Well, I can guarantee you they're not going to punt it. I and the reason I say you. that is because they don't want to take a chance on a bad snap mm -hmm. or a block or anything else. And, of course, when you have a 250-pound running back, chances of you picking up a half a yard are kind of in your favor. There's an element to this for Mark Ramsey, who's been doing this a long time, where he may t ask his team, can you pick up one yard so we can go home? You know, that's interesting you say that because there's are situations where coaches will ask their players, you know, if they want to go for a tie. Let's say after a touchdown, do you want to go for one to tie it or do you want to go for two to mm -hmm. win it? And, you know, you're asking dance. your players. They're the ones that are going to have to, uh, to do all the work out there, so let them help make the decision. Again, Tri-Valley had all three timeouts left to start this drive. They've used one. And there's some confusion right now. It has to do with the clock. Clock was running. The clock was running, and I think I think Josh Roop had thought he had spent his second timeout. Now there's a flag on the field. And St. Teresa was acting. So you see them at the bottom of the screen. They had assumed there was a timeout called. So well, the key is that clock. Bill Farquhar and company are getting together to talk about it. Right now the clock says 219. And Josh Root lobbying hard saying, hey, why are they in a huddle but we're not? Why are they over there? I wouldn't want him coming after me. No penalty. They're going to wave off any flag. Yeah. 
Is that man competitive? Oh, you can read it on his face. Absolutely. And that's his job as a coach is to defend his players. And right there, I mean, hey, all he's doing is trying to ask the officials why that clock was running. Why was the opponent in a huddle? And he's trying to get the answer for his kids. I give him a lot of credit. He could also get a flag for that, but the officials, being a good crew, know the situation, and it's not going to happen This right is now. the replay, by the way. 2.43 is what it was at. And now that clock runs with a full 25-second play clock from here. And so on fourth and one, Brummer's going to walk it all the way down. And Roop spends the timeout, and Tri-Valley's got to stop it. And still, there's still not any sort of clarity on this. Boy, there's still, 40, year, 40 years of calmness right there. It's to try and watch it again, to try and understand it. Now, 243, look, they're all in the huddle down here. And players are looking up at the clock. They're seeing it. They certainly saw it from St. Teresa saying, hey, our cl the clock's running. What are we, not so much what are we doing or should we go out there? And this is our, this was our live feed. This is what we showed you just a few seconds ago. And Tri-Valley coaching staff noticing it after about 17 seconds. Always excitement in high school football. <laughs> Now, I will say, if you're St. Teresa, you get the first down, all of this is academic. But upon a stop, that's that's a different story in terms of how that factors in. It really is, it no comes, doubt about it. It comes down to making one play. Can Tri-Valley do it regardless of what time is on the clock? And there's big number 33. And there is nobody sitting. three pounds. Fourth and goal, fourth and one. Brummer sneaks. Penalty flag comes out. Somebody moved. Could be St. Teresa. St. Yep. Teresa moved. I think it was an illegal formation. Let's take a look. One fifty-seven. They're going to get an offside here. It was a false start. And again, our. Our audio monster ate the microphone for the uh, officials, so we apologize we can't hear it. Some people say make-up calls, but let's see if we see movement here. I didn't it's see any close. Unless that's it up. That's and I think we're looking at the idea of an illegal formation as opposed to a false start. Either way, they move it back five yards. It makes it fourth and six, and now a punt try from. Joe Billy Geis. Actually, Joe Brummer will punt. A low snap, nearly got a piece of it. Reganold cannot return it. He won't. It will be at the 16-yard line when Tri-Valley takes over with 1.49 to go. I don't know exactly how much time, Matt, they lost. I want it's to seconds. Say it. It's not minutes, but it was seconds. But still, it adds to this. 45 is my best guess. 45 seconds? 45 seconds. That's and, a lot of plays. And he knows that factors in. So whether there was confusion, but regardless, he's now got one timeout. And the Vikings will have to go to work for the chance to tie. They've got to go 84 yards. Knox will throw. Right side, it's caught at the 20. And the clock keeps running. Nicholas Trauget with the catch, just his fourth of the year. Clock runs at 133. You know, the old theory, we want to throw when we want to, not when we have to. But I think uh, Tri Valley's in a situation where they have to. Empty set with Reginald to the left. Open man, Ooh. left side, it's Regano, and he can't run underneath it. He had oh. an open look at midfield. There was nobody behind him, and Blake Regenold was staring at six. Oh, mercy. 
Those are some tired legs. Watch it again. Good job here by the by uh, Andy Knox keeping the ball alive. But, wow. Ooh. He wanted that one, and he could see it. Reginald back in the backfield, 113 to go. This is third down. Reginald with the catch, but it'll be short of the first down. And he got, that's it. And he's hurt. And considering the amount of work he's had to do, he is feeling it. Yeah, he got popped pretty good on that. Yep. Those add up. But now he's going to have to come off the field unless they use a timeout here. Yeah, when they come out like that, he's got to mm -hmm. come out. And that's going to come at a very inopportune time. He slides out of the backfield right here to get in the flat. And he, I mean, he takes a good pop right there. Oh. They're going to walk right off. there made a big hit. And he, he immediately stopped moving upon contact. 43 carries today. There is never anyone in any state championship game that has carried the ball more than Blake Reginald. That's an all-class record. And out of that injury timeout, the clock's going to run. They didn't credit a timeout at all. So this is fourth down and five with the clock running. State championship right here. Knox will throw. Left side. Open Same man. play. And it's caught. Colton Prosser at the 45-yard line. 37 seconds to go. 33 yards on the catch. Clock stops through the chains. The exact same play that they threw over through on the last one. First, see, they should never get beat here, Matt. They're coming up and playing tight. Two receivers each side. Knox will throw again. Pressure coming. Skip slips out of it. That's a catch. First down and more. Inside for maybe 11 yards. Kate Danko with the catch. 25 to go. Ball set, clock running. Knox at his 40. Knox will throw. Left side this time. Open man again. Ooh. He overshot him. That was Prosser who was open. Guys was in the neighborhood. And that stops the clock with 14 seconds left. Interesting play right there. They ran the slot man in behind. Off the other two plays, they were running him up the field. Now they cleared and ran him in behind him again. Ooh, mercy, how do you get beat like this at this late stage of the game? Beautiful ball from Andy Knox, who's thrown for more than 1,000 yards this year coming in. Second down, but it doesn't matter. 14 seconds left. They have one timeout. They can use the middle of the field. Knox now, he'll throw over the middle. It is caught. The team of the catch first right down. at the first down marker. They will stop the clock with eight seconds left. They've got to hurry or they'll use a timeout. And they use that final timeout with eight seconds left at the 23 yard line. Mark Ramsey trying to hold on. He's staying as calm as possible. But for a guy who's been a runner-up a couple times and hasn't won a state title in a while, he wouldn't mind holding on and getting a win. Watch this again. How about Grant Fatima going up and getting that catch? And that really, they haven't gone to him at all today. We thought we were going to see him more on jet sweeps and those type of things to get to the edges, and we haven't seen that. And Andy Knox was uh, kind of up and down all throughout the day, 5 of 7 on this drive. He's managed to find four different receivers. And the Vikings are doing it on this drive without break Blake Reginald, who was helped off the field after taking a big hit on the other end.
Well, coming down to the last play of the ball game. Now, remember the field's constricted here a little bit because obviously there's less yardage for the defensive backs to cover because the, def the end zone is like the 12th defender, so they can only go so deep. And what kind of uh, pressure are they going to put on him at this point? Two plays, no timeouts. Knox looking towards the end zone. He's open. And it's incomplete. Ooh. Three seconds. Oh, he was open. That's the first time, Matt, that they ran that formation. They had a, a triangle up on the top there. He's going there the whole time. Oh, he hit him by a step or two. Danko in the area. Ooh. Thought he had it, wanted it bad, didn't get it. So one more for the road. Tri-Valley trying to force overtime or a chance to win it. They need to find the end zone here. And Mark Ramsey will use one of his timeouts to reset his defense. And we'll take a deep breath. Well, Coach Ramsey's been through games like this. You know, I mean, this is a state championship game, but he's been through games like this in the regular season. So, I mean, obviously there's more going and at stake right now, but you can see right now he's not, he's a little frustrated at what's going on. He didn't expect them to be moving down the field like this, especially throwing the football. If you're Brett Miller, the defensive coordinator for St. Teresa, you dial up a little extra pressure here knowing? Well, or is that too much of a risk to take? It's kind of a risk because, well, first of all, those linebackers, you could send them because the linebackers at this point are not going to be helping in the run. So, and they're not going to be, everything's going to be going into the end zone right now. Well, Maybe not so much into the end zone as maybe crossing routes to get somebody to ball and run into the end zone. It doesn't have to be thrown into the end zone. This is the kind of conversation that's happening in the timeout right now. How do you handle this? Well, this is what, you know, what coaches have uh, meetings for and talk over things. One play for the season, for a career, for a lifetime for both of these teams. Can St. Teresa hold on? Can the Vikings cap one heck of a comeback from the 23 yard line with three seconds to go bunch formation to the left Knox with pressure he'll throw it towards the end zone open man and it's incomplete and the Bulldogs survive St. Teresa's first state championship in 43 years wow Right down to the last play, the last second. It doesn't get any better in high school football than this. The Bulldogs win a barn burner, and Mark Ramsey, another state championship. One of the best in Illinois to ever do it. In his 40th season. State champion in 1997 in his first state title in 25 years. Got to give a lot of credit to uh, the Vikings of Tri-Valley. They they really did a great job. It's a great football game. And right down to the end, Andy Knox kept a minute with throwing the football. That was one heck of a drive. And Tri-Valley and St. Teresa... They're gonna they're gonna have a conversation in midfield. How about that for a finish for our 2A state championship game? That's a great look right there. Now you talk you ever about seen anything like that? High school football. You don't see colleges doing that. You don't see pros doing that. But high school football. That's an amazing shot right there. Now a shot like that should be shown all around the country. When we come together after a competitive day like it was today, the winning and losing, and yet look at that. What a great picture that is. A two minute sprint to the finish, and both teams 30 seconds later, hand in hand on one knee. That's and, you talk about sportsmanship. And that's a handshake line. That's just great. I love to see that. Let's go back and watch the last play one more time because it's worth watching. Great defensive effort, and it's your Menards play of the game. Save big money and all your home improvement needs. 
Well, Andy Nice kept, kept the play alive, no doubt about it. Now, if he would have caught that ball, would he have been in? Pretty darn close. And look at poor coach right there. He thought it was close. Now, there's a man that's competitive. And the sudden realization for Mark Ramsey that it's over, and <laughs> we actually got the win on that one. He could take a deep breath. Andy Knox did everything he could on that drive to put Tri-Valley in position to try and tie it, stepping up in the pocket on that play and giving himself a chance to make that throw. But just a bit short as Tri-Valley season comes to an end at 11-3. And St. Teresa at 14-0. Their oh. first state championship since 1979 and their fourth in school history. What an outstanding football game. We had records set. And you hope that everything's okay with Blake Reganold, who took a pretty good hit the beginning of that final drive, did not return after 43 carries, an all-class record. And what's amazing about that, Matt, is 43 carries, and he gets that hit right at the end, catching the football. One-on-one yeah. -on -one yet. Mm -hmm. He ran all those 43 carries. He was running in, getting hit by three, four, five people. And just popping right up, there was one on one, and it just where he got hit, down he went. But there's a great effort right there. Let's send it downstairs to Don Johnson. Down on the field with Coach Ramsey. It's been a long time. What is it, 43 years now? <laughs> Coming back to the state. How sweet is this victory for you today? Uh, it was it was great. The kids have been uh, working for this all year and. To see it happen was uh, great for them. I, uh, I'm so proud of them. Have you ever coached in a game just back and forth like that? <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's been a few. I've coached in over 400, so uh, not state championship games. Still but... got your nails? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, barely. Uh, you know, I'm just uh, so proud of these kids. So uh, I, hope they, I hope they enjoy it. And, uh, I don't. It's been a while. It's been a while. Well, congratulations on a fantastic win. Great back and forth victory. We're going to talk to number 20 guys yeah. about uh, his effort today, both on both sides of the ball. Oh, he's been he's been great, Billy. Come on in, Billy. Yeah, uh, Billy, guys. Who I just happened to be on the sideline the first time they missed you on the deep ball earlier in the series. You went back and told the quarterback that you were open. Yes, sir. And then you ran that route deep. Talk to me about that, man. So he was pressing me, and I was like, Coach, I got him. I got them. They missed me that one. It's fine. Then I was, but I need I needed it back and scored, took the lead, and I'm just happy to be here. I'm grateful. How, how does it feel to be a champion? Man, it's crazy. We lost in the semifinals last year. I really felt like we should have won that. So just coming back, fighting through all the adversity we did this year, I'm just so proud of my boys and all the hard work we put in this season. Congratulations on a great effort on both sides of the ball as a defender and the great toe-tap catch. Thank you. All righty. Let's send it back upstairs to Matt Rodewall. Finish the season as the 2A state champions, the St. Teresa Bulldogs. Receiving individual awards, Superintendent Dr. Kenneth Hendrickson. Principal Larry Daly. Athletic Director Matt Snyder. Head Coach Mark Ramsey. And the Bulldogs captains. At this time, we present the championship trophy to the St. Teresa Bulldogs, who finished the season with a final record of 14 wins and no losses. Congratulations to the Bulldogs. The Illinois High School Association and Illinois Farm Families, thank you for joining your team at Memorial Stadium. We hope you enjoyed your visit to the University of Illinois. Please have a safe trip home.
There's the state championship trophy for St. Teresa. St. T hasn't had one of these in 43 years, and they had a lot of big plays to do it. 87-yard touchdown pass in the first half and a 76-yarder, but it was defense that did it for him. A state championship after the 29-22 win in the Class 2A title game. We'll be back. The IHSA Football State Championships are being brought to you in part by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs. And by ISU. Create your legacy at Illinois State University. Black Friday is here at Menards, and we've got the perfect present for your loved ones. With something for dad, mom, and the kids. Everyone in the family will get what they want, even your furry friends. Enjoy the season and the savings. Deck out the tree and stuff your stockings with these great gifts at amazing prices. Hurry in and save big money. These deals won't last long. Doors open at 6 a.m. on Black Friday. Save big money at Menards. How do you predict the future? You create it. You build a foundation. Pave a path forward. Soak up the journey and turn experiences into something life-changing. At Illinois State University, we deliver on what every college should promise you. The opportunity and tools to write your legacy every day. The rest is up to you. What will you create? Create your legacy at Illinois State University. Want a great career? Join the Carpenters Union and be part of the next generation building our communities. With the Carpenters Union Career Connections Program, high school students get a head start on the industry's leading curriculum. Learn the latest in construction technology and the many skilled crafts that Carpenters Union represents. Plus, earn as you learn. Receive a nice paycheck, health insurance benefits, and best of all, no college debt. Ask your school district to participate in the Career Connections Program and get started on your future. From the days of the one-room schoolhouse, public schools have always been the heart of our community. It's where our students learn and are inspired to dream big, where we cheer on our teams under Friday night lights, and where parents, teachers, students, and loved ones come together as one. Now, more than ever, our public schools unite us. This message is brought to you by the Illinois Education Association, IEA, because we are stronger united. Our final score from our Class 2A state championship game, the St. Teresa Bulldogs, a 29-22 winner over the Tri-Valley Vikings in a thriller of a title game here in our second game of the day. Matt Rodewald with you, Jack McInerney here as well. Uh, that was fun. It's from start to finish. It was it was kind of strange and fun, exciting plays all the way around. No doubt about it. When you talk about the first game that we did, 1A, against two football teams that just wanted to run the football, run the clock out, very close scoring game and then all of a sudden we get to this game and it's up and down the field it doesn't get any more exciting than this it's is it hard to believe that the next two could be like this and tomorrow could be even better i don't know we saw not only just the exciting plays but the physicalness that blake regnold took a oh. lot of hits there hope he's okay he went out late in the in the fourth quarter in that one but it really started with some defense tri valley was able to move the football up and down the field a little bit saint Teresa was able to get off the field on a couple of key plays well there's no doubt about it and this was of course a big play in this post route and this is the only big play they really had they got it to their athlete uh dry valley was was stopping them on the run and all of a sudden here comes your record breaker right here i mean this kid is a football player from start to finish record setting and now we're talking about another athlete get the ball to athletes that can run and that's exactly what happens and here's a touchdown right here on a play action. And that was really a, a big play. A team that runs the ball, all of a sudden they come back and they play action. And now you got another athlete right here. The play was designed to go inside. He bounces it outside and he goes down the sideline for a touchdown. Andy uh, Knox also, we saw him and, and this beautiful catch for a touchdown that made the difference. But Knox's throw here, this was knocked away. And that is how it ended with St. Teresa winning a state championship. Boy, it was, uh, it was fun all the way to the last throw and the last play. It really was, and that's a perfect example right there of how exciting it was. We didn't fall on the floor up here, but we came pretty close to it. I know I did. That was really an exciting football game and an exciting finish. 
Well, we will get out of the way because we have two more exciting games to go. I see Catholic and Williamsville and, of course, Providence and SHG. Jack, it's fun for you and I today. Oh, it was good. I hope all the rest are like this. Let's do it tomorrow. 5A and 6A for us. Smile big, kids. You only win a state championship once. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium on the campus of the University of Illinois here in Champaign-Urbana. What an amazing finish to that 2A state title game as the Bulldogs of St. Teresa. They run the table, go undefeated 14-0 with a 29-22 victory over the Vikings of Tri-Valley. Welcome back. Mark Kruger along with former Northwestern running back Don Johnson. We're glad you're with us. Coming up later on today. You thought you saw two great ones in the 1A and the 2A? <laughs> How about the 3A? I see Catholic Knights out of 